four months, nine days, and but a few hours ago, the season started, and now it's the culmination of everyone's efforts. Welcome to the Baffer Brit Bowl Finals weekend here at Butts Park Arena in Coventry. And I'm pleased to say that joining me here for one of the most prestigious events in the British American football calendar, I'm pleased to say British American football royalty has joined me, Tash Crump. Tash, how are you first off? Hi, James. I am doing so well. I'm so excited to be here. It is Brit Bowl weekend one of my favorite it's like christmas it's like christmas for the british american football scene right it, now. no it just is christmas it, is? it just oh, is okay. it, it rivals christmas and then it's <laughs> taken to another level Jumping because this weekend is bigger than it's ever been before i mean we've mentioned it off camera let's talk about it on camera now it's the first time the division two final has actually featured on brit bowl weekend how much do you think that means to the players and their families first off yeah, first time it's featured on Brit Bowl weekend and I think that is the incredible thing that we're starting to see the culmination of all the finals now joining up on one weekend. What it probably means to the players and the families is actually Division 2 is being taken seriously. These teams are being promoted to Division, to Division 1 next year. So we are going to be seeing them at the top level, um, sorry, not top level, mid-level, um, hoping to get to that top level of British American football. So it's only right then you give them that respect and put them on the same weekend as all of the other teams that are also pushing to get to that next step. Absolutely, and we should take them seriously because both these sides, both Shropshire Revolution and East Kent Mavericks, they finished top of their conferences in the regular season and then steamrolled their way through to these finals. So these really are two teams to be taken seriously. What should everyone be looking out for back home from these games? Yeah, I think with this game in particular, like it's going to be really close, as you say. They both steamrolled through the playoffs. They both steamrolled through their 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 divisions and actually what we need to be looking for is how each team are going to react to each other but be able to shut each other down so I think that when we're starting to see what East, East Kent are doing when we're starting to see what Shropshire are doing it's have they identified each of the players that they need to be stopping and then how are they adjusting themselves with especially East Kent having the bigger side how is Shropshire going to be able to actually cope with that with the depth etc. Well, before we get to the most socially acceptable timing of American football match for any British fan this season so far, we need to find out from the coaches what they think. So we're going to catch up with Shropshire coach John Angel first to see what he has to say ahead of this historic fixture. So I'm here with Shropshire Revolution head coach John Angel. How are you doing, John? Yeah, good. Good, good. It looks a good day. Lovely day for football. Yeah, the sun's come out. The weather's feeling okay at the moment how are you feeling how does it feel to be here at the Div 2 Brit Bowl final great we couldn't have asked for any more to be honest you know it, it's seasons um, you know we were looking for promotion we got promotion we got championships for the north and now we're looking to win the whole thing you know the, the team's ready the team's up for it just hope for a good game of football really and have you had to make any adjustments since being in the playoffs um, to basically come up against a very large East Kent team uh, no, to be fair, and we've been lucky with injuries, to be honest. We, we, we've come in with a team that we, we faced with against Humber. Uh, not many changes. We've been able to, to keep a, a very, very big squad, to be fair. And so, no, it's a, against a relative unknown. I'm really looking forward to it, to be honest. It's really, really, I'm really looking forward to it. Amazing. Well, thank you for joining us, and good luck for the game. Thank you. Well, it's great to get some thoughts of a coach who should be very happy about being here today. Speaking of happiness, the sun's finally starting to come out, so the weather's happy that we're here in Coventry as well. But Tash, let's talk a little bit more about this Shropshire side. They've not had the easiest rides over the last couple of years. Can you talk to us a bit more about that and for those at home who might not know? Yeah, so with Shropshire, they got relegated down to this division, down to Division 2, um, after, I guess, kind of losing some of their players, um, losing some of their coaching staff and just having to like really rebuild themselves and they managed to bring on some incredible players like obviously Billy Hewitt who is now over in the States um, being a kicker over there at, at, at community college level and I think that's incredible they've managed to attract players of like that caliber and that level but building themselves back up it takes time and so to see them to get back to this stage where they're able to be in a final and it will mean the world to them obviously yeah. and all of their fans and these traveling players as well so let's talk a bit more about this season in particular you kind of alluded to it a little bit but comparing their schedules in regular season to other teams they sort of had a slightly easier run didn't they yeah i think when you look at the teams that shropshire had to go against i'm not saying that that division isn't hard because um when you are down at division two level it is really difficult to get out of division two teams that are playing in division two will know that because some have been there for years but when you actually look at the teams that they were playing against 
They are slightly easier opposition. However, some did push them and did make them have to make some adjustments and change. But going 8-0, and it really shows that they managed to keep going, push through and really like... Oh, eight no doesn't just happen overnight, does it? No, it takes it a doesn't. lot of work, a lot of effort, and a lot of planning. And then obviously, they came into this playoff route now. They managed to ride the challenges, push through it all, and they're here at the final today. And as we've already mentioned, that will mean the world to them, won't it? Yeah, massively. It'll mean the world to them with the fact they are going up to Div 1 ne next season. So they're back in Div 1, so they've made that transition. It's whether they can keep hold of these players now and keep progressing and keep getting better and start actually pushing again to get those wins at Div 1 at that next level maybe we might see them next year in a couple of years actually in the Div 1 Brit Bowl final but you never know. You never know, you never know indeed Tash. Well let's head over to the east side of the pitch where East Kent Mavericks have set up shop as we need to hear from their coaches about what they're thinking ahead of this final. Simon, it's Brit Bowl weekend, how do you feel to have made it with your East Kent Mavericks? Um, I feel absolutely excited, it's a fantastic opportunity, obviously it doesn't come around very often. Um, the guys worked really really hard and they deserve to be here really. Now, something that's slightly different to the regular season that Shropshire have had. You guys were 7-1 and one this year, I believe. Um, but actually, you learn a lot more in defeat, don't you, than from your victories. Do you think that it's given your side a bit of mental toughness when you went through into that postseason and you just steamrolled your way through to the finals here in Coventry? Yeah, so we, so we were 7-0 and 1. We, we tied one. We didn't lose one. Um, so we've, we've come for an undefeated season. Um, we just really focused on the teams that were coming to us. We scattered really well. We concentrated. We had all through the build-ups of the teams, we focused on what we needed to do and that's what we did in training and obviously it worked out really well. Who can we look out for today? Can you give us any inklings to some star players that people should keep their eyes on at home? Uh, honestly, this team is absolutely packed with so many talented players. Uh, offensively, we've got uh, GB running back Ty Bavell. Um, we've got some outstanding receivers. Um, our quarterback, uh, Ed Screece, is um, a very young quarterback but he's made some amazing throws this year. Defensively, we've got a very good defensive line who chased the quarterback and, and shut down the run really well. Theon Coleman's um, done really well this year. Um, defensive secondary, uh, across the board, there's too many names to, to, to say. You've just got a team full of talent, basically, by the sounds of things. And let's finish off with a final word for all those fans watching at home and actually maybe to give thanks for all the fans that are in the stand already making noise for your team. Yeah, it's been, all year we've had fans that have come down to look at home games. It's been fantastic. We can't thank you enough for coming out and supporting the club. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, get it today and do what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Well, we've heard from the coaches, we've heard from the teams, the anticipation continues to build here, Tash, and also the sun is starting to properly shine here at Bucks Park Arena. However, it will only continue to shine on one team's day after this match. Tash, your final thoughts before we begin this game? Just really excited. At the moment, East Kent look like the more well-drilled team from that warm-up, but we'll see what happens. Well, we will indeed see what happens. So let's head over to our commentary team, Carl Walkinshaw. But first, Matt Walker. Well, thank you very much. And welcome to the commentary booth here for day two of Brit Bowl weekend, Carl. You and I were here last night, witnessed that Great Britain-France game, which even though the score was a 21-7 to the French, that doesn't really tell the true picture of the game. No, it was closer than it looked on the scoreboard. And certainly there were periods there when the GB under-19 Lions really shone and showed what they were capable of. But we turn our attention today to the Div 2 final between the East Kent Mavericks and the Shropshire Revolution. Didn't Tash and James do a great job in the pre-game show? Absolutely, absolutely beautiful, knowledgeable, charismatic, taking lead from us up here, Carl. Everything we're not. Absolutely. Anyway, like you say, Carl, we've got four games coming to you this weekend here from the Butts Park Arena in Coventry. We start things off with the East Kent Mavericks taking on the Shropshire Revolution. Then we have the National Women's Football League final later this evening between the mighty London Warriors and the equally impressive Birmingham Lions. Then tomorrow we come back for Division 1 action in the morning between Northumberland and Hertfordshire. And then we finish things off with Brit Bowl 35, the London Warriors taking on the Manchester Titans once again. Been a bit of a, a hefty journey for these guys as we see the teams preparing to come out. I say, Carl, it's not been an easy playoff journey for some of these guys coming through. It hasn't. We'll run you through that in a moment. We're just waiting for these uh, East Kent Mavericks to come out. You can see them there. They're going to be in grey and red today. But you're right, Matt, in terms of the journey, it's been a tough old journey for East Kent Mavericks and they've had some difficult games along the way. They took the first 
round in the quarterfinals. They beat the Hertfordshire Stampede 43 to three. So they had a, a good win over them. They then went on to the semi-final where they played the Solent Wyverns. And uh, that game they won 37-21. So that was a closer game and a high scoring game. So this is an offense that can put up points and that got them here. Absolutely, on the other side of things, Shropshire opened their account against the Gateshead Senators, taking them down 35-20, to 20, and then faced off against the Warhawks from Humber and dispatched those guys 37-7. to 7. So, high-scoring offences on both sides of the ball here today, Cole. And both of them scored 37 points in that semi-final, so we're really looking forward to seeing some offence today. Been out on the field and had a look at the two teams, got some big guys on offence and on defence, and so... It's going to be a tight one today. 72 points in those two playoff games for Shropshire, but uh, 80 points in two playoff games for the Mavericks. So some high-powered offences on display today, and conditions are set fair. We have another beautiful day here in Coventry, the heart of the Midlands. You can Be see Shropshire there as well, just in terms of the kit. Uh, Shropshire will be in their familiar white and purple. I remember playing Shropshire back in the Nottingham Caesars days, back in the day when they just started up, and here they are on the Div 2 final. I've got a feeling, Cole, the very first game we called was the Caesars against the Shropshire Revolution at Southglade. I think it was Doncaster. Oh, well, your memory's obviously better than mine. Oh, we're Mustangs. Both, both getting on a bit. We um. are. Well, anyway, we'll have a look into that. But, yeah, so four games to bring you over the next two days in this 35th Brit Bowl weekend. And I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really excited about what we might see. Just caught up with uh, Coach Rowe of the Great Britain Lions as we welcome our officials out onto the field. Referee Oli Maskell leads his team with Henry Richardson, Kenny Glover, Jim Briggs, Amir Brooks, Ian Sneddon, Andrew Morrell and Dave Hewitt taking control of this one. They've chosen Seven Nation Army to come out to. So there they are, the Seven Nation Army referees ready to go. Love it. All these teams will get to have got to choo choose their uh, walk-on music and uh, referees get to choose too. They do indeed. Do we get walk-on music? Uh, we, we, we walk just, we're part music. of the furniture. We don't walk on or off. We're just here, aren't we? But anyway, our officiating crew and thanks to all at Bafra and all involved with officiating American football in Great Britain because obviously without those guys and girls we would have no games to enjoy. So, yes, Hertfordshire, East Kent, Birmingham, London later on today, and Div 1 and the Prem to look forward to tomorrow. Shropshire came down from that Div 1. They, they struggled in Div 1 last season and had a pretty abysmal season. But they've gone straight back down into, the, into Div 2 and they've rebuilt, and now they're back. And the East Kent Mavericks... They're a team that have benefited from good recruitment this season and they've picked up players from the exiles that wanted to play at that lower division. And they've picked up other players as well through their season and they come with a stack full of talented athletes as their head coach was explaining. So we're excited to see what both of these teams bring. Absolutely, just waiting for those uh, player announcements and we should be going in any second now so wait for the atmosphere to build as out come the East Kent Mavericks nice slow purposeful entrance each of the teams gets to choose a piece of music to come out to East Kent have chosen 50 cent, many men, and here they are, the many men. On to the field here at Coventry Butts Arena, you can hear those vuvuzelas going off. There's lots of East Kent support. There's a whole, what do you call a group of vuvuzelas? There's a question <laughs> for you. <laughs> Let's not start that right in the first part of the weekend. Well, there's a whole a group cluster of vuvuzelas. A cluster of vuvuzelas. <laughs> cluster of vuvuzelas. Wow. Right in the middle of the crowd, making their presence felt as the coaches geeing up the crowd so we're expecting lots of noise and lots of energy from this East Kent Mavericks side and they pose for a pre-game photo right in front of their fans they're on this near sideline closest to our country position as well and I think like you say those Vuvuzelas are all for the Mavericks it's going to be a noisy one hope you can end up hearing us 
all afternoon for this one. Head coach was saying they've had great support on their sidelines all season long. And they've brought them up to Coventry, Shropshire, not too far away. Sorry, East Kent, well, it's quite a drive up for them. So uh, they've done well to travel. Big squad as well. Not just in terms of the size of the athletes, but good numbers. And uh, you need good numbers to get through a season successfully. Yeah, we spoke yesterday, didn't we, Carl, about how the, the actual position of American football in the UK is probably the strongest it's ever been in all formats of the game, from flag women's, under-16, under-19, and up to the adult game. And if we're considering that this is a Division Two final, like you said, the size of this squad down there from the East Kent Mavericks is nothing short of remarkable. So we await the arrival of Shropshire. And while we do that, have a little look at the East Kent Mavericks record this season. So 1-7, lost 1, 198 points scored, 48 points conceded as they topped the SF2 East. Won all four of their games at home, just dropped the one, or in fact, sorry, 1-7, lost none, tied one game. So they are currently undefeated. The one tie coming against bottle of the bottom of the table, East St. Kent Sabres. So the Sabres managed to thwart the East Kent attack. But I say significant advantage you consider eight games played and have scored nearly 200 points in eight games that's quite impressive and only conceded 48 as we await the arrival of their opponents this afternoon the Shropshire Revolution and here come the Shropshire Revolution they bring in an 8-0 unblemished record 256 points scored 104 points conceded, perfect at home, perfect away, 8-0. And the Revolution are entering with the Sandman. Great bit of entrance music, isn't it? Enter Sandman Metallica, made famous by Virginia Tech University in the States. And if you haven't seen the videos of uh, that college coming out, then have a look. Yeah, we've not quite got that uh, that bouncing crowd here, have we, Carl? But the sentiment's not dissimilar. And actually, a noticeably smaller squad for the Revolution on that far sideline than the uh, the Mavericks. And that dark grey kit of East Kent really imposing as well with the red numbers. But nevertheless, there's only 11 players on the field at any one time, Cole. Shropshire had a terrible season last season in Division 1. Didn't win a game. Dropped down to Div 2. And it's been good for them means you can rebuild and now they're unbeaten in that division and ready to make the transition back up to Division 1 and really compete. Both of these teams already promoted but this is the national final. This game wasn't featured in Brit Bowl weekend last year and so these two teams get Coventry Butts Arena, a real place where they can showcase their talents. Obviously, they get the live stream as well, so it's a big event for them. Yeah, interesting. Under-19 final this time last year, Cole. And uh, this year, the under-19s had the privilege of playing at the NFL Academy site at Loughborough University, which uh, we commentated on. It's a beautiful venue, beautiful uh, facility for those youngsters. Certainly was, and we got the live stream there as well. So both of these, all of those teams just benefit from people being able to tune in and watch them play, watch the talent that they've got, watch how they've built this season to get where they are. Go through, as we go through 
the pleasantries, if you like. Captain's ready on the halfway line. But before that, we'll enjoy our national anthems. Always sends a chill down the spine, Carl, any time you hear your national anthem. And then for those players on the sideline, it's now, if it wasn't real already, it's becoming all the more real. Yeah, you know, you're in a national final when the national anthem is played. These two teams have arrived. Time to get rid of those nerves, get ready for the game. Minutes away now. Not nervous, are you, Carl? <laughs> Talking to myself. <laughs> One of the best weekends in British American football. Britball weekend. First time coming from the Midlands. The last few have been down in London. Obviously, not so long ago, we're at Worcester as well. At this Coventry Butts Park Arena is a fantastic venue. You can hear the noise from the crowd as it's begun to increase during this last half an hour. East Kent Mavericks are the away team today. Shropshire Revolution, the home team. My name's Ollie, I'm the referee. This is Henry, he's the umpire. There are eight of us on field today, so please come and see us if you have any issues. Okay, here is the coin. That is tails. That is, sorry, that is tails. That is heads. That is heads. That is tails. As the away team today, you're going to call the toss. What would you like to call? Heads called? It is tails. So you have won the toss from here. They like the third. Okay, structure one the toss and the further options in the second half. They receive the ball and you'd like to pick from. That way? Okay, turn your back to the goal line to defend it. East Kent had the options in the first half and elected to receive. As you heard there from our referee, Oli Maskell. Revolution got the call, they called heads, they lost the toss, and the Revolution, with their decision, chose to defer, as the majority of teams these days do, Carl. And we saw France do similar last night to great effect. Yeah, it seems to be the trend is to want the ball coming out Q3. You know, especially in a national final like this, if there are nerves on that offense and they have a little bit more time just to settle, get the defense out there. Well, we definitely did see last night, didn't we, Carl, that there were nerves on both sides of the ball last night and the French deferred, Great Britain took the opening kick-off and then really spluttered in that first offensive series. The advantage you get is also, you, you know, you have more context. You have more context at the beginning of that Q3. You know what, what the situation is. In Q1, you're just coming out and uh, doing your damnedest to get a score on the board. So, good decision to defer. And we'll see if that pays dividends. We will do our best, obviously, to call this game as best we can, but from a distance, call those red numbers on the grey background, quite hard to see from our vantage point. But I say we will do our very best. As Lewis Mellins prepares to kick off for the Revolution. And another good crowding call for this D2 final. Yeah, a few hundred people here making a lot of noise, especially those East Kent Maverick. Fans. Well, I'm literally stood next to you and can barely hear you with a headset on, so great enthusiasm all around. So sit back, sit back, relax, and get ready for a great weekend of British American football as we get things underway with the D2 final, the Shropshire Revolution kickoff. Ball is fielded 
at the 10. Out to the 20 and stumbles over the turf monster. And on first down, it looked like there was going to be an opening there for the return man. But it is a decent return nevertheless. It will put East Kent in good position to start things off. Bernie Debra on the return for the East Kent Mavericks. And uh, did a decent job getting them up to the 35-yard line. So it's a good field position, even though, as you say, Matt, Turf Monster got him. Happens to us all. <laughs> First down then, East Kent. Quarterback, Edward Strazy. Shotgun formation, handoff on first down, off to the left. Runs laterally, still on his feet, tries to truck one tackle, but it's a good tackle by Reese Mellins. Pick up of about a yard. Yeah, good pursuit to open their account. Shropshire Revolution defence stringing that one out to the sideline. No huddle offence employed by the Mavericks at the start of this game. Not allowing for substitutions by the Revolution. It's going to be second and ten. Whistles pre-snap. I think it's something to do with possibly an equipment failure. Mouthpiece on the receiver on the far side, or well, the near side as you're looking, and he's going to have to go out for a play. You've got to make sure your equipment is all in check. As uh, Robin Barber Street runs to the sideline, waving his arms in frustration, but we're ready to go again. Second down. Crazy hands off to the right this time. A similar play, other side, well pursued once again by the Revolution. Conor Luscott with the tackle. Yeah, again, that's twice they've tried to get to the edge. They're running that two-back set with running backs either side of the quarterback in shotgun. Scracy hands the ball off. But Shropshire have played those edge plays really well, bringing up this long third down. Great lateral pursuit by the Revolution, third and nine. Scracy from the shotgun again. Got time, goes to the far sideline. But that's in and out of the hands of the defender. And we've called his name a couple of times already on this first drive. Reese Mellins, that ball kind of fluttered out there. And East Kent go three and out. Looked like could have had a pick on that first series there. If it just got there a little bit earlier. Maybe there's those nerves we talked about and uh, Shropshire refer uh, deferring. And once again now, Three plays and out. The defense get a field. As a defensive coordinator yourself, Carl, do you like your unit to take the field first? Yeah, because you're full of energy on defense. You know, you're just fired up. Your defensive line's ready to create chaos, and you can use that adrenaline on defense in a way you can't on offense. That's a short kick that takes a, initially a Shropshire bounce, then rolls in the favor of the Mavericks and comes to rest at the 26 yard line, where we'll see Shropshire in their offense for the first time today. Yeah, the East Kent Mavericks, they're a big unit, this defensive line. Some big guys on the field. Daniel Hills, Christopher Auburn, Adam Carroll, and others with lots of rotation in at that position. Alex Wake brings the offense out for the first series for the Revolution. And the sound in the crowd here is electric. Man in motion, left to right, Wake hands off on first down, no it's play action, he's under pressure and he can't elude the grasp of number 35, Theon Coleman and his head coach mentioned him in pre-game, Col. He did, he's a hell of a player, he's been making plays like that all season long, just comes off with a quick burst, beats the offensive lineman, straight in on Alex Wake. And uh, that's the sort of pressure you could bring early on in the game because you are fired up on that defensive line. Second down then, second and 21 after the sack. Big bodied quarterback Wake, this time pitches to the right. And that's great outside contain once again, but he manages to bounce his way out of those tackles. He's still on his feet at the 25, dragged down at the 30. Welcome to the game, Dominic Chase Griffith. That was a great run by Dominic Chase Griffith. He was dead to rise in the backfield. That defensive line had collapsed the left side of the Shropshire line. And Dominic Chase Griffith, that was all in. 
So from second and 21, it brings up a very manageable third and five off the efforts of the halfback. Chase Griffiths remains behind Wake, pistol formation. And a real hard count, and that's going to be a free play for Wake, but the play has been waved dead. And that's a real good use of the voice by Wake, and it's going to be a first down by way of penalty. Oh, why are they blowing it dead? That would be the question. I mean, if that's a defensive penalty, then that play should have been allowed to continue. So we'll have to wait and see. Good use of the hard count, though, early on. Shows Wake's confidence. Brings up. First down. Apologies, Mr. Maskell, talking over, talking over the top of you, but as we mentioned, encroachment, offside penalty. First down, Shropshire. First first down of the afternoon. I guess there must have been contact, which is why they blew it dead. Stack formation to the far side for the receivers. Wake looks that way, pump fakes, goes to the corner. And it's a dangerously floated ball and well defended. Number 41 for the Mavericks. Nicholas Mayer with the tip. Trying to get the ball to Mark Phillips, who's a very good receiver. We've covered him in previous games for Shropshire, and he is their danger man at wide receiver. So they needed to cover that up, and they did to the East Kent Mavericks. The first test for their defensive backs, and they rise to the challenge. Second and ten. Alex Wake, big body quarterback there in the backfield. Strong, powerful arm as well. See if they go back to the ground on second down. It is a fumbled snap and Wake manages to pick up, gets his head downfield. He scrambles to his right, puts the ball over the top. He's got a man just out of the reach of his intended receiver. And great creativity from Wake there to turn a potentially disastrous play into something positive. That ball seemed to roll around just under the centre's feet for a long time. Wake sort of took a step, checked whether he had time, and saw that he did have time to pick it up, roll out to his right. Tell you what, Matt, it's exciting the beginning of this Div 2 final. Third and long, Wake and the offence. Single receiver out to the right for Wake this time, trips to the left in a bunch formation. Close to the line, the offensive line, he's got loads of time as Wake, and he looks over the top and tries to find his receiver Phillips and he does and Phillips with a great grab for another Shropshire first down that time Wake looked like he was in a dreamland offensive line did a great job there they've obviously made some adjustments because you remember the first play was a sack East Kent Mavericks defensive line were coming on strong but that offensive line really giving Wake a lot of time and that is the danger man as we said Mark Phillips who's a really good receiver just found the zone Aitchison takes the pitch this time to the right, cuts back inside, gets on his feet up close to another first down and the Revolution are rolling. Both these running backs showing what they can do so far. These Vuvu Zaylers going to be deaf by the end of this one. Second and short. That's a good run to the left-hand side. Another first down for the Shropshire Revolution. Started this one back at their own 20-yard line. And they've marched it all the way into... East Kent Mavericks territory. Another set of downs. First down. First down it is then. Wake hands off once again to the right side, but good penetration this time from the defensive line. Short gain on first down. And that's what they needed to do, this defensive line. Really need to get back into this game. They're being bullied right now by the Shropshire Revolution. Even on that play, Shropshire picking up another four yards on first down to make it a manageable second down play. Second and seven then, upcoming. Ball on the 25. Good opening drive here by the Revolution. 
Hand off once again to the right. Patiently runs, tries to find the edge, does get the edge, and that's going to be close to another first down. Chase Griffith with the carry once again. Jordan Lee Carr had to chase that one down. But these runners beginning to find space, and there's some good blocking going in from the Shropshire Revolution on the edge as the sticks move once more. First down now at the 15. Good sustained drive here for the Revolution. And a lovely mix of inside run, outside run, pass. And there's going to be an injury timeout at this stage. Yeah, sorry once again, Mr. Maskell. Injury timeout on the field. But it's uh, breathless from the Revolution in their opening possession. Yeah, really calm, controlled drive. And uh, after the initial nerves settle down, they've got that running game going. And then on that critical third and long, they managed to hit the ball, Mark Phillips with the reception to keep the chains moving. So East uh, Shropshire Revolution showing that they've got weapons on the ground, that Wake can throw it, and that Mark Phillips can make the receptions when he needs to if they get into those tricky third and long situations. So at the moment, winning the coin toss for the Revolution has paid dividends as they held East Kent to a three and out on their first series. And since that time, they've marched 60 yards plus down the field and they find themselves first and 10 on the Mavericks 16 yard line motion from right to left Wake drops back to pass he's got time once again goes to the corner again looking for his receiver receivers there in and out of their hands tipped by Chris oh, Treaty flag's gone in flag down now I don't know whether that's going to be offensive pass interference for the push off on that because it didn't look like the defender did anything wrong there I think you're probably right Carl the Treaty went up with one hand but the other hand was giving him a bit of leverage off that DB I don't know if we can get that on the replay at all. Let's listen to our official. Pass interference. Defence, number 39. Wow. As the foul occurred in the end zone, the ball will be placed in the two-yard line. Automatic, wow. first down. Goodness me, so that's a... The refs obviously saw something we didn't call, but uh, what a break for the Revolution. Might have come earlier in the play, but I think that's a tough break for East Kent. First and goal then, Wake and the offence, hands off to the right. And it looks like he's going to be into the end zone for the opening score of the afternoon. Jamie Aitchison for the Revolution gets them off the mark. Yeah, the offensive line, power of those... Right guard, right tackle, really blasting that East Kent Mavericks defensive lineman off the line. And Aitchison goes in from a yard out. But it was that pass interference penalty that set them up for what in the end was an easy walk-in. I mean, take nothing away from the revolution. That drive there, incredible in its creation. Different looks, different sets, different formations. Lewis Mellings on to attempt the extra point and the play is blown dead before we start. Yeah, it was a, a nice sustained drive. Mr Jarvis, uh, one of the coaches at um, Shropshire Revolution, will be pleased with that one. as they try for this extra point, just going for the one. So, Mellin's on then to attempt the extras. Hold is down, kick is up. And the kick is good. Couldn't have gone any better on their opening possession for the Revolution. Seven zip, Revs. Let's have a look at the PI call, first of all. So, you're going to... Watch the top of your screen here. Let's see if we can pick anything up on the camera. Now it's just out of shot. Here it comes here. And now that's not the number that oh, they did call 39. 39 now, they I did call don't call. See no. anything wrong with that. And here's a touchdown ensuing play. Aitchison off to the right hand side. Patience, big hole. Oh, he does well there. Could have lowered his shoulder a little bit more into that contact, but manages to fall forward across the goal line for the opening score. 
Really dubious call, but you're right, Matt. You can't take anything away. Is the extra point now you're watching on the replay. You can't take anything away from Shropshire in terms of that drive. So Alistair Jarvis, who's the... Uh, so sorry, John Angel, who's the head coach and offensive coordinator, will be pleased with that drive. Revolution kickoff for the second time today, then with 7.16 left in the first. And that's a nice return. Benny Deborah. Bounces it outside, past the 40. And the Mavericks now need to go to work. Had three plays on offense so far. They need to really now try and put something together on this second possession. Yeah, now they can put points on the board as well. In this Div 2 final, we've got two teams that can really score and score quickly. Edward Scrazy then surveys the landscape, hands off on first down. Run goes up the middle. Not a great deal of action there as Revolution's Sam Rhodes Hodgkiss. The lineman puts an end to that play. Like you say, Cole, kind of forget this is D2. Some good quality stuff in this opening first quarter. Four receivers set now for Scrazy. And as a flag comes in, more than likely going to be illegal procedure or too many men on the line. Or... But it didn't look comfortable out there for the receiving core as they were bouncing around. Interesting to see how Shropshire play this um, trip set that East Kent coming out with as well. Referee Maskell, over to you. So yeah, lined up in the neutral zone there, Carl. Equates to an illegal procedure penalty, five yards march further back. Second and 13 now then for the Mavs, Revolution threaten blitz, and they do bring the blitz, run to the left, going laterally once again, and that Revolution defence swarming, and to be fair, Carl, the ball, the ball carry does ever so well to get back to the first line, because he was dead to rights about four yards deep in the backfield. Yeah, they're playing close to that line of scrimmage, they went to a tight bunch set to the top of your screen, did East Kent, and they're trying to get those blockers man on man. But Shropshire are just quicker off the blocks and into the backfield before these backs have got a chance. We talk about momentum a lot in football. And at the moment, if this is another three and out drive, the momentum will be securely with the revolution. Scrazy goes up top this time. It's another high floating ball. Almost like a punt. And the reception is made. Great adjustment on the play. Matthew Barber Street with the reception. But again, I'm a little worried when that football's floating around in the air like that, Cole. Well, he's got, he saw the look that he wanted, did Scraley. He saw that he had, you know, one-on-one -on -one to his right-hand side. Lewis Mealings, the Shropshire Revolution defensive back, had good coverage, but he just backed Barber Street, and Barber Street makes the reception just stronger on the ball when the ball's in the air. First down, Mavs. Up the middle goes the rumbling, bumbling, stumbling runner. Pick up a five on first down. Nice and patient there behind his blocking. Waited for a lane to open up. Here's that big pass play. You can see, he just sees he's got one on one and lofts it up. Now it's just who's got more hungry for the football. And Barber Street just backs into that defensive back, takes the ground he needs, makes the reception. Second and five. Cat Maverick's now got something rolling. Flag comes out early. Another similar run. Not overly effective this time, but the fact that that, play, that flag came out when it did would suggest it may well be a defensive infringement. It looks like actually it's going to go against the Mavericks again. Five men in the backfield, Carl. A couple of sloppy errors, he had the encroachment, and we've got the formation penalty. So second and five becomes second and ten. Yeah. 
Gracie back to pass once again. Pressure coming, steps up in the pocket, throws into triple coverage. Dangerous throw there. Yeah, really dangerous. And that looked like it was calling it incomplete. Chris Mellings really had a shot to pick it off. Here's the replay. Scraley dropping back. And there's all sorts of traffic in the middle of the field. And you can see there so many Shropshire Revolution players around that ball. Lucky it wasn't picked. So third and long. The one benefit that the Mavs have this time is that they've switched field position. So the uh, Revs will have to go a long way, but maybe not. As the runner bounces off two tackles, he finds the 10, the five goes in. Touchdown, Mavericks. Terrell Beauville taking it in for East Kent. And that was a strong, authoritative run. Had a good gap initially. And then just bulldozed his way into the end zone. So, three and out on first series. 75 yards on their second one. They managed to overcome some penalties as well. And East Kent looking to level things up with this extra point. Kick is up. And we are tied in the Division 2 final. Shropshire Revolution 7, East Kent Maverick 7. We've got a good one going on, Cole. Here's the touchdown to Beauville. Hand off to his right hand side, sees the cutback lane, and here's the big boom. Bam! Beauville barrels his way through. Great running from Beauville from 17 yards out. Both of these teams there, we can see how they put up those 47 points in their respective semi finals to bring them here. Some really explosive offences, and don't remember that. Uh, don't forget that big pass to Baker Street. There's a Good song there somewhere. There. It's Baker Street. <laughs> I'll let you sing it, Matt. Da, 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 da. You asked me. Anyway, 3:40 left in the first quarter. We've yeah, still got three minutes 40 left in the first quarter. Well, these are 15-minute quarters, aren't they? These for these Div 2 finals, these adult men. So there is a bit more time left than last night. High short kick then fielded and fake the reverse. Keeps it in possession past the 30. And that ball was hung out like a loaf of bread for a few minutes there. Santino or Tino Dummett, the man returning. Yeah, and so many teams now are using that little switch. Sometimes they show it, they don't do it. Sometimes they hand it off to another player in the backfield. It's becoming more and more prevalent in British American football, but it does come with some risks. First and 10 for Shropshire in their second possession, just getting to the end of this Q1, and that's a good defensive play. Adam Ridgewell coming in from his linebacker position to drag that runner down. And this is what East Kent weren't doing on that drive. Aitchison on the carry. Touchdown scorer. Let's see if the Revolution can go two for two and touchdown. As the East Kent fan base raise the roof here in Coventry again. Complete on that one, but he had the right idea. Did quarterback Alex Wake. He saw the one-on-one -on -one and tried to go over the top. Good coverage. So big third down now for the revolution then. And you feel like that momentum we spoke about earlier is slowly, slowly switching to the side of the men from Kent. Let's see if Wake can put pay to that. Out into the flats. Phillips makes the first man miss, and that's a great open field tackle. Rock Jess Rye on the tackle for the Mavericks, which will bring up fourth down. 
What a great name for a defender, Rock. Yes. And he was rocking Mark Phillips there. Mark Phillips, good athlete. And I thought he was going to skip round that. Really great open field tackle. Here's the replay. When you're making these sorts of tackles, you've got to wait for the runner to commit to one side or another. And Rock Jess does exactly that. Waits for Phillips to cut, goes with him, brings him down. So the Mavericks will be pleased the way they switch things around after that opening possession. And looks like it's going to be a fake. They've got to pick up five yards and he's going to get their second effort. That could well be enough for a revolution first down. What a big call. Well, didn't look like he was going to have the speed, did he, Adam Naylor? He plays tight end and he's their punter. Played for Shropshire Revolution for a number of years and you thought, has he got the edge? And he just rumbled his way enough. Broke that first tackle, put his head down, got to the sticks. Shropshire keep their drive moving. Nothing to lose here. Both teams playing with abandon and open play. Great to see. Really exciting. Wake them with a new set of downs. Goes immediately to his right-hand side and just over the head of Lewis Whitchurch. Yeah, Here's hard, the fake punt. Hard to call. Goes a snap, Naylor takes it, takes a look to his right-hand side and then he's off. And you just thought, there's the bullying his way just across the line and has to bull his way over to East Kent Mavericks to pick up that first down. Tell you what, you don't often see punters with that sort of athleticism. Here we go then, straight up the middle on second and ten, and it's Aitchison again with daylight, and he picks up another revolution first down. I'm loving this, one of the best games I've seen for a long time, this one, Con. Yeah, both teams come to play. I just wonder where that East Kent Mavericks defensive line's gone, because they were really penetrating into the backfield early on, but Shropshire offensive line, those big men up front really taking control. Alex Park, Mark Pocock, Adam Burton, Maxine Bacon, Dylan Gilligan really having a good game so far. Wake pitches to Ageson to the right. Good outside contained by the Mavericks defence. Ageson tries to cut back upfield, but nothing doing. Good defensive back play. That was Nicholas Clayson coming in off the edge to take the runner down. And they know that if the runner is going to try and find the edge, you know, if that block is missed, that key block, defensive back can come in gets his man to the ground. Loss of three on the play, sets up second and 13. Just inside Mavericks territory. Wake hands off, stretch play this time to the left. And that is shut down quickly once again by that defensive front of the Mavs. Ian Whitehead from his inside linebacker position making that one. Nice quick tackle before the runner has a chance to build up any momentum. This is better from the East Kent Mavericks defence after that fake punt. They've stiffened in this series. And the Vuvu Zaylis get louder and louder as we come to the end of the first quarter. We have a tied. We have a tie ball game here. The Shropshire Revolution 7, the East Kent Mavericks 7 in this battle for the Division 2 crown. Great to see two evenly matched teams that have powerful offences. You look on the screen there, Carl, you can't imagine that that many people in the stand can be making this much noise. But they are. They are, and it's, it's really adding to the atmosphere. So if you are here in the stands, we know some of you are listening in on the, on the commentary as well while you watch live. So thank you for being here. We appreciate your support, as do both of these teams. Yeah, we, we, know, we know that because we've had people come up and tell us we're mispronouncing names, but <laughs> hey-ho, there you go. We appreciate that, though. The last thing we wanted to be calling somebody's name wrong all game, particularly in a national final. But I'm, oh, I'm just so excited, Carl, and I just can't hide it. I think I'm about to lose control. I think I, think I, like I like it. it. <laughs> Couldn't be more evenly matched. 7-7, seven, seven, ball at midfield, third and 13, revolution and you can't hear yourself think for this support from the Mavs. I'll tell you what, I should have brought some earplugs. If anybody in the truck can turn the atmospheric to down, sound down on our uh, headsets, that'd be amazing. I'm only joking. 
They've got the right idea. Just watching some fans come back, some burgers and chips and some coffee here. Yeah, great facilities here at Coventry. That's you want to come down lunch. and enjoy. We've got Football America down here as well. EP Sports as well on site. Providers of merchandise and kit. I'm sporting the official merchandise oh, map. Yeah, did yeah. you notice? I did We're notice. Bowl 35. I think I'm going to have to go under official t-shirts. Yeah, probably. T-shirts available for Football America, but the caps by EP Sports. So they've split the the merchandising across two of the big names in British American football. So that's good to know. I'm going to say that shirt probably looks better on you than it will do on me, but nevertheless. Yeah, it's a good look, I do like that, I do like that a lot. No one can see what we're talking about. <laughs> they can look, they can see us on the screen there, we're right at the back standing up. I'll give you a wave. Anyway, back to the action, it's third and 13. Huge play in the scheme of this game here. Wake goes up top, there's a flag comes out and it's going to be... Oh, in and out of the hands of a Mavs defender. I think that's number 41, Carl. Can you confirm that? I think it's Nicholas Mayer again who had a chance for an interception. Wonder if that was a free play, though. So let's have a listen to Oli Maskell. No, I think it's going to be against the offence. Offence number 23. This penalty is declined to bring up the fourth down. Yeah, Phillips started to move forward before the snap call. You'll see it just at the top of your screen there. There he goes. Here's the replay on the defensive in the play. Obviously, wouldn't have counted anyway, but you'll see what great position from the defensive back. If he had to pick that one off, it that would have counted. It would have counted, yeah. So a break, really, for the revolution. And on comes Naylor again. He's not going to fake punt from 4th and 12, 13, is he? No, he's not. Ball goes up. It's a short end-over-end -end kick. He pitches inside the 20 and bounces straight out of bounds. It's going to be Mavs ball at the 17-yard line, man down. The player's gone down now. I don't know whether he was actually kicked by the punter. Which would be an odd injury. He's back on his feet now, which is good to see. Naylor's a big lad. He's a big punter. And he's nailed him as Naylor. Yeah, just caught the end of his leg. What about running into the punter? What about the punter running into you? Well, he's, and he has struggled to get off the field, having to be helped off by his uh, training staff. Here we go then. First down, Mavs. Run intended to go up the middle to begin with and then had to bounce back out to the left-hand side. And the ball's out. The ball is out. Just waiting for an official. I think they're going to mark that as the runner was down by contact. But good lateral pursuit once again by the Revolution. Really impressed by the Revolution defence. Filling up all of these running lanes and getting multiple people to the ball. It was Lewis Mellings, the DB, that first arrived. And then Riss Mellings coming in as well. Two brothers there, I assume, really making an impact on this Shropshire Revolution defence. Second and 12 to the far sideline, pass complete. Nice step inside by Robin Barber Street. It's going to be close to a first down once again. Barber Street had that big reception earlier to set up the East Kent Mavericks touchdown and he looks really handy. It was a flag far side of the field. Just get a check on what that is. Scrace got that ball out of his hands very quickly. I think it's going to be Illegal formation is the call. It's the second time they've been called with too many men in the backfield. Not enough men in that line of scrimmage. Tight end was lined up in front of the line. Going to give a shout out to Joel Pearson. Joel is our rules analyst today. Feeding us with the information for these calls. Now Dean Blandino of British football. Running play up the middle that time. Nothing doing on second and long. It's going to set up a long third down for the Mavericks. And that's what Shropshire need to do if they're going to take down Terrell Bozor. Let's get 
get as many people to the ball as possible but you can see the toll it's taking Beauville's a big strong runner lands right on the defensive lineman for Shropshire Sam Rhodes Hodgkiss at the bottom of that pile feeling the full force of Beauville third and 17 then disgrace there's a man in motion right to left two receivers either side now after the shift goes up top again it throws into double coverage and in and out of the hands and the receiver did have an opportunity laid out to try and make the reception and as a receiver he will be disappointed with that but it was a very tough chance not shy about just putting the ball up is he Scrace here's the replay Joel Hughes the intended receiver call Scrace this time does have a safety coming over the top to help out but he wants to take the shot anyway looks to his right just to try and look off that safety but in the end there's the safety and the DB both of them have good position but the wide receiver better adjustment on the ball beautiful high punt that sails over the head of the returner and it bounces and he manages to pick it up and makes the first man miss and now he scrambles to the sideline and George McPherson turns what could have been a potentially dangerous situation into a positive play for the revolution that's when you've got your heart in your mouth as a, if you're a coach on the Shropshire revolution side but in the end it was well handled by George McPherson so still a very evenly poised game here when you just think that one team is slightly getting the advantage the other team adjust and defensively make a stop let's see what Strace and the Revolution offense can do in this second quarter Butch Park Arena here in Coventry Division 2 final on Brit Bowl 35 weekend You could feel that impact from over here. There must have been a blown assignment on the offensive line there as the runner stays down. Chase Griffith stays down after that huge impact. It's Theon Coleman again. That big defensive lineman. You saw in the first half how he's already got that sack. Now let's watch this takedown here. Number 35 looks straight through on the runner and bam, no chance. Chase Griffiths did well not to go down initially, but luckily the ball didn't come out as well. Complete blown assignment there. Good to see Griffiths running off the field under his own steam. But a complete blown assignment by the offensive line there. Second and 16. Pass in and out of the hands of Adam Naylor. He's a punter, he's a receiver. He's a tight end, actually, but Naylor does it all, and that one was dangerous. The way that he had that ball up high and then was knocked by two defenders, that could have easily fallen into the arms of one of the DBs and been a turnover. But the Mavs bringing the heat again on defence. Yeah, Wake just didn't do any favours. Had really had to drill that ball in if he was going to have a chance into his belly rather than up high. Now, will they look for Phillips here? Scrace has time, goes over, he's got a man. Phillips is that man turns can't get out of the grass with the first defender another good open field tackle and that will bring up fourth and short and Naylor's on again he is the punter we've seen him already take one for a fourth down conversion but you're going to be a brave man on fourth and three from your own 35 yard line with the scores tied to go for it here yeah I think certainly you wouldn't want to fake punt it here you might go for it by lining up under centre which is what they are going to do big call here we saw them draw the defence offside in the first quarter with a hard count from Scrace he tries that again it's not happening this time tries the hard count once again and I think the East Kent Mavericks have been disciplined enough there and they have to burn a timeout yeah good job by East Kent again you know hats off to Shropshire as well for being smart enough to try and get them off with the hard count. 
both teams, this Div 2 division. So Shropshire have to call a timeout after not getting East Kent on the hard count. Both these teams have been impressed by how well coached they are. And Div 2, you know, what do you expect coming in? Both these teams look professional, they look good out there on the field, they're well coached, they've got great strategies and tactics, the head coaches know exactly what they're calling on the play. Good stuff from Div 2. Even just that, even just that play there, for the coaches to call it and try and draw them offside with a penalty and the discipline of the Mavericks not to jump, that, like you say, that showed professionalism. So 10.52 left in the second quarter. That looks like, I thought I saw a lineman go early there, but Naylor gets the kick away. Takes a nice revolution bounce inside the 25, down and settles on the 20-yard line. It's then, ironic, they nearly got him offside on just lining up with the punt. But uh, there was a twitch, but the refs didn't call it. Decent punt from Naylor. So looking around the crowd here, Carl, we've got some interesting outfits there. I can see some uh, rather attractive... Barbie hats. Cowboy hats there, looks a bit like a Hindu down there, maybe. I don't know, yeah, cowboy hats, Mavericks, I get you. So I don't think the Hindus are in, I think it's just the, the Mavericks paraphernalia. Incredible hairdo down there as well. Really liking that, I'm just jealous of the, the hair at all. Back to the field we go then. On comes... Scrays. Goes up top and that's going to be re complete on the sideline. Martin Lewis had an opportunity to pick that one off, but that is made once again complete from Scrays down to what is becoming his favourite receiver, Barber Street. Here's the replay. What Barber Street does so well is adjust to the ball while it's in the air, and he's always got a better adjustment. So even though 29, Martin Lewis had a shot at that, Barber Street's got the position. Scrays goes back looking for Barber Street once again. Another completion. Back to back receptions for Barber Street. The one thing that worries me a little bit is when Scrace goes long, the ball seems to float and hang in the air. Barber Street took a shot there, slow getting up to his feet. He's going to take a rest, get him off, yeah. onto the sideline. Coach right. is helping him off. Right leg. It was that second defender that came in and delivered the blow, and he's limping his Barber Street. We keep an eye on that one. Right lower leg injury by the looks of things, the way they're addressing him on the sideline just down from our commentary position. Scray second down, handing off this time, straight up the middle. And he's going to barge his way, muscle, bully his way forward for a Mavs first down. Beauville's built more like a tight end than a running back. And he's just bullying his way across to move the sticks again. I feel like East Kent with a little bit more momentum on their side in this drive. False start, looked like, looked like the uh, right guard move there. Same play, different receiver this time. Teju Koka with the reception. And Scray's finding his rhythm now. Koka plays Bucks American football as well, featured in the uh, Div 1 final. He's a big, tall receiver. Plays tight ends and playing out in that X position today. Second and four, corner blitz coming. But that's negated by the run and a huge hole at the centre. Inside the 15, down to the 10-yard line. Tackle made by, San, by Tino Dummett. But another huge running play. And the Mavs looking to take the lead. Big running again from Beauville between those tackles. That offensive line's creating some huge gaps for him now. And he's up onto that second and third level. DB's needing to make tackles against a very big, strong, fast runner. Revolution defense all up within five yards. Craze to the corner. Looking for... Caught! Juggled! Caught! Back in the end zone! That man once again robbing Barber Street. Touchdown, Mavericks!
acrobatic juggling catch. Amazing. Well, he went off injured, didn't he, Barber Street? The medics came over to him, took a look at that left leg. And listen to this crowd now. They're loving these East Kent Mavericks. Barber Street on the sideline, firing them up. You can see him there. That was a beautiful lofted pass, but again, the East Kent Mavericks quarterback backing his players. Grace knows been through the season with him and knows it. if he puts the ball up in a one-on-one -on -one situation it's always his receivers that are making those adjustments while the ball's in the air to bring it down oh this game turned completely on its head revolution looked the dominant force early on here's the touchdown Cole well this is Beauville's run to set up the touchdown Beauville just ripping holes through the heart of the Shropshire defense and taking bowling defensive backs over here's that back corner fade it's one-on-one -on -one defensive back as he's back to the ball bobbled tipped caught great concentration and position from barber street to bring that ball in and i, I tell you what carl you can't knock martin lewis the coverage was really good you know it's just that concentration to maintain eye contact with the football all the way through 8 18 left in the second quarter and the Mavs find themselves on top with the support of this incredible crowd. Good kick fielded in the end zone and out of the back of the end zone. A huge kick off there. John Ellender kicking duties for the Mavericks sends that one through the back of the end zone so East Kent you feel have got the momentum now in this game with that score from Baker Street it was Beauville that went in earlier, and Baker Street picks up a second touchdown. Shropshire need to answer back. You're gonna, Still plenty of time in this Q2 left. You're going to keep getting me singing if you keep saying Baker Street. It's Barber Street. Barber Street. <laughs> First down, run to the left for the Revolution. Stretch play. Picks up a couple, but no more. Good lateral pursuit as we've seen all afternoon so far from the Mavericks. You really feel like the revolution need to find something here before half time because the momentum is definitely with the men in grey at the moment. Second and seven. We know Wake has got a good arm, proven that already during this game. He drops back to pass. The timing pass, and that's beautifully done. Lewis Whitchurch, again, the recipient of that wake pass. And what I loved about that, from our position there, Cole, that was a pure timing pass. That ball was in the air before the receiver had even made his cut. Yeah, he bobbled it a bit, didn't he, Whitchurch? He was right on the money, you'll see it here. Just runs the receiver right underneath the ball. Bobbled initially, but good concentration by Whitchurch to pull that one in under pressure from the DB. First down. Wake looks so poised in the pocket there. Offensive line giving him plenty of time. Ball handed off on first down. Little spin move by Chris Treacy. Manages to get himself out of the backfield and picks up a yard. Daniel McGeever quick off the defensive line from his defensive end position to snuff it out. Only a half a yard pickup. Shropshire finding it more difficult now to run on this East Kent Mavericks defensive line than they were earlier on. Always a strange one. East Kent are the away team. No flag, even though the D-line jump wake off his back foot. Another timing pass. Broken up by 21. Ozioma. Obiazor 
trying to get the ball to Naylor, that big tight end. It was the right call. The ball just hung in the air a little bit too long. And it meant the defensive back could get into better position. Azuma Obioza made a nice play on that. I say I find this interesting call. Obviously, East Kent are the away team, but they have the sideline nearest to the stand, and therefore they're they're being able to really pump the crowd up. And the home team Shropshire Revolution find themselves out on a limb on the far sideline. It was the same last night with GB. GB Lions was indeed. away from the supporting crowd. Big third down play coming up for Wake in the offense. Drops back, pumps. Goes to his right, that's floated again and intercepted! Back out to the 45-yard line. And Wake was hit as he threw there. And that had an impact on the flight of the ball. Yes, yeah, a couple of times where Wake has sort of telegraphed where he's going with the ball and the ball's just hanging a little bit too long in the air. Easy pickings that time. John Ellender, man on the spot there, number 23 for the Mavs. Here's the replay. You can see Wake just double pumps, a little bit of pressure, but not touched, and just hung the ball out too long. Easy pick for Ellinger. Well, that Revolution defence has really got to find something now on this drive as Scrace comes back on. Heads will be high. Little swing pass. Open field, screen. Works really well for a first down, and the blockers downfield set that play up beautifully. Really enjoying watching Bovell run. Seeing him run up the middle with devastating effect, but he can also receive with the edge. It's a big, strong, athletic runner. Yeah, he can run, he can catch. Owes a lot to the receivers there that time. Hand off up the middle, a huge seam! He's at the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Mavericks! Cameron Newton on the carry. I think it was Benjamin Crabb actually for the East Kent Mavericks who took that one in number 10. And that's the sort of runs that Bavel was also. The first touchdown Bavel was similar play. They're just really finding their groove now that East Kent Mavericks offensive line and getting a big push You're against quite... this Shropshire Revolution defense. Quite right, Carl, it was Crab. I saw a zero. Couldn't see the two in front of it. Sorry, the one in front of it. Thought it was a two, but yeah, Ben Crab with a beautiful horn. How well blocked was that as well? Daylight just opened up in front of him and he went untouched 40 yards for the third Maverick touchdown of the afternoon. Shropshire player is on one knee, just taking a break. Let's look at that replay. There's Crab. look at the size of the hole, and then a quick burst of speed. And he outruns everyone into the end zone, untouched. Great running from Crab, but a better hole from that East Kent Mavericks line. Makes it easy when your line does such a great job. Shropshire Revolution player currently on uh, one knee is uh, Lewis Bailey. And the medics are just giving him some attention at uh, the... Uh, Shropshire 40 yard line so uh, a break in play but it looks Matt like this team East Kent really taking control in this Q2 two scores on the board first one from Barber Street the second one from Benjamin Crabb as uh, Lewis Bailey just gets to his feet there and gets some aid over to the sideline Adam Naylor giving him a hand. Three touchdowns from Mavericks, three different touchdown scorers. Beauville going in from 17 yards to start proceedings, then that 10-yard pass to Barber Street, and now this 40-yard rumble from Ben Crabb, the latest. Let's see if Joel Hughes can add the extras. And he can. 21 to 7. The East Kent Mavericks in control. Shropshire need to make some adjustments to try and get back into this game now. What was working early for them is no longer working. East Kent Mavericks finding a way to shut down their 
star receiver Mark Phillips, who's not had a reception in Q2. Similarly, their running backs just not making the yards that they were earlier on. 5.45 left in the second period. Jamie Aitchison with the touchdown for the Revolutions from one yard out early on, but since then we've not seen or heard from him. No, it's been all Mavericks, both sides of the ball. 5.42 left, though, they've got an opportunity of the Revolution to try and get something back and pull closer before the half. Fielded by Tino Dummett, and then he reverses it. And they've got space here, and this has opened up nicely for the Revolution. One man to beat, but there is a flag. He beats that man. Simon Farrenden is going to go in, but this is going to be called back. There are two flags, and on a kick return like that, there's only one reason that those flags will be on the floor, Carl. There'll be illegal blocks in the back. Yeah, right on the 50-yard line is the flag. It's going to come back. And there's another one on the 30-yard line of Shropshire as well, so two flags down. It was a beautifully designed kick return they go on the switch you see on the replay here it's a sort of delayed switch so there's the replay from Simon Farrandon but it's going to come back to about the 30 yard line where the, the penalty on the 50 was declined and they took the penalty on the 30 yard line for holding so just when the revolution think they may have found a spark, there's unfortunately usually a reason for a big kick return. And this time it was a hold on the 31. Waking the offense back to work. Aitchison on a little pitch, in fact that is Phillips. And he tries to dance his way through, picks up five, balls out. This will be close. We've had a couple of these so far. Neither gone the way of the defence, and I don't think this one's going to either. As Phillips manages to pick up four or five yards on first down. Phillips is trying to make something happen on that play, but trying to keep his feet, use his athletic ability to run between the tackles. When you do that, with all those defenders around you grabbing at the football, Got to get two hands around it. Yeah, the forward progress there was stopped before the ball came out. That's why it wasn't a turnover, even though the runner didn't go down. Wake back to pass. Finds his man, Niall Stroud. And Stroud gets out with enough yards for a first down for Shropshire. Another flag, though, Cole. It's going to be for a late hit against Shropshire. And uh, they're calling for a medic to the far side of the field as well. Yeah, with some urgency as well. Yeah, so I think this play is going to come back. Ian Whitehead, linebacker for the Mavericks, almost sprinted into the midfield, beckoning the training staff to come across. So, Carl, we'll uh, turn away our attention from this game just while that Maverick play gets some. Uh, Help from the training staff. Just bring you information about what we've got coming up for the rest of the weekend. This evening from five o'clock, five o'clock kickoff, we see the culmination of the National Women's Football League. Two of the big names in the women's game, the Birmingham Lions, go head to head with the London Warriors. It promises to be a real good game with lots of GB stars playing in that one. It does, lots of girls that know each other well across the national programme and been Birmingham Lions women team for so long and then last year the London Warriors won it and shifted that momentum to the south and uh, it will be interesting to see it'll be interesting to see whether the uh, Birmingham Lions can uh, get revenge on the Warriors for the defeat last year and then we come back and do it all again tomorrow call division one final midday kickoff between the Hartfordshire Cheetahs and the Northumberland Vikings. Cheetahs dispatched the Norwich Devils in that semi-final game 28-6. And the Northumberland Vikings took care of the undefeated Nottingham Caesars 34-13 in their semi-final. So that promises to be a real good matchup again between the Cheetahs and the Vikings. I used to play for the Cheetahs back 
in the old days and they were called the Watford Cheetahs. You used to do a lot of stuff in the old days, didn't you? Those were the days, Matt. And then once we've seen the culmination of that Division One final, we come back for the pinnacle of the British American football season. Brit Bowl 35 between the London Warriors and the Manchester Titans. That's obviously a rematch of last year. The Titans were the underdogs last year and came out upsetting the Warriors and, and really put them to the sword. And you know that coach Tony Allen and the Warriors will be wanting revenge for that. They will have been thinking about that and plotting the course all year to try and take down quarterback Sam Bloomfield and the Manchester Titans. And it was interesting what Sam was saying last night during the GB game. If you didn't see that game, we got a chance to speak to Sam at halftime and just get his thoughts. And I said, you know, is it different? Do you feel psychologically different now? You're coming in as defending champions rather than the underdog. You remember when they came in last season, there was all that social media noise, you know, and they knew they were the underdogs. And they sort of played up that sort of persona, right? Nothing to lose. Nothing to lose came in and really overturned the London Warriors. Well, this time the tables are reversed. But uh, it will be interesting to see. They've certainly played really well all season long, Manchester Titans. No drop in their play. They've recruited more players even than they had last season, but so have London. So I don't think it's going to be a walkover, and I expect London Warriors will be competitive. They will have their quarterback, D. Williams, back, who was injured last year, you remember, which made a big impact on them. Interesting, though, the, the gap down there in the south is maybe narrowing a little bit because... Uh, the Bristol, Bristol Aztecs took down the Warriors during the season, so it's not an undefeated season this year for the Warriors, and those Bristol Aztecs were the semi-final opponents against the Manchester Titans, and, and obviously football down in the, the southwest there in the Bristol area with the SGS Pride and the Bristol Aztecs and the Apache. Real strong area for football at the moment, Carl. Yeah, and that mystique that the London Warriors had for almost a decade, you know, that they were just too big, too strong, they would just overpower you on offence. The Manchester Titans just wiped that away because, you know, now they're a human team, they can be beat. But also, they're a team that are really rebuilding themselves. So it's exciting for them as a programme as well. It was remiss of me actually talking about football in the Bristol area, not to mention the UWE Bullets, who obviously rein in two-time reigning books champions as well so again football down in the bristol area is really coming on strong but manchester in that semi-final against the bristol aztecs just too strong 39 19 winners london taking on the edinburgh wolves in their semi-final and the warriors demolishing the wolves really 49 to 10 but that promises to be a really exciting matchup tomorrow evening called five o'clock kickoff here live stream to bring to you but we're hoping for an incredible atmosphere in the stadium as well so as we await and they take as much time as they need obviously to make sure this Mavericks player is is well Can't, haven't got a number for you yet we'll try and bring you information if we can later on let's talk about the story of this game so far Carl Revolution won the toss, elected to defer and it seemed like a good decision at the time as the Mavericks went three and out on their first possession Revolution took the ball on their first possession and marched 70 yards to pay dirt as Aitchison ran a one-yarder in after that controversial defensive pass interference. Then, from that point onwards, it's been all Mavericks. He has. It started with that big pass to Barber Street. I'll get his name right this time. Barber, not Baker Street. I will keep singing if you get it wrong. We're hearing that the uh, injury to the East Kent Mavericks player seems to be an upper body arm injury. The medics are still with him on the sidelines, just on the field. So, going to take as long as they need to make sure he is safe. But it was uh, Beauville that scored for the Mavericks first. That big run up, been impressed with him, number 81 for the East Kent Mavericks, and busted his way up the middle, broke a few tackles. So, they were using the arm of Grace and Barber Street receiving the ball and setting up Beauville. Then at 7-7, it looked like we had a bit of a lull in terms of the scoring, certainly. Both defences really stepping up, exchanging punts. Good to see the player back on his feet and actually, yeah, like you say, walking off under his own steam, proudly from the far sideline and getting a fantastic ovation from the crowd. 
Still yeah. four and a half minutes left. Sorry, Carl. Still four and a half minutes left of this first half when we get play back underway. But all his teammates coming out to greet him. Yeah, it looks like he's either his wrist or his hand. So uh, great to have the facilities here that we do and the medics quickly on the scene. They were right on him on the sideline. And he's just going over to his parents just to let them know what happened. And we can get on with the action. Good to see that he's OK and we hope that that uh, injury recovers quickly for you. Here we go then, first and ten after the penalty. It was a penalty against the Revolution for that hit. But they did pick up a first down, so they marched 15 yards further back but pick up first down. It'll receive a screen again from Wake. Positive yardage, spin move at the back end of that play, and that's going to be positive. And things just getting a little bit feisty out there now, Cole. Well, it's um, Niall Stroud, the wide receiver for the Shropshire Revolution, and they've got to get some other players into this game because uh, Aitchinson was their go-to runner, and then Mark Phillips as well. Just he's Kent done a good job shutting them down so they're needing to go deeper into their roster some other players to get the ball too four minutes remaining then second and three revolution on their own 26 hand up at the middle beautiful little cut move there and then drilled absolutely drilled dominic chase griffith has taken some punishment today already and he danced his way out of two tackles, but got blindsided, really. Theon Coleman going high, and then another defensive lineman hitting that running back low, and lucky to hold on to the football. They're really bringing the boom. Here's the replay. Nice jump cut in the hole. Comes back to his left, and bam, bam. We can see two that big injured, hits going in. That injured Maverick player walking down in front of us to get some attention and smiling, so good to see. But anyway, third and two. Out. Oh, perfectly timed tackle. Perfect by number 21, Ozioma Abiazor. The ball arrived and so did the defender. Wakes just lofting these footballs a little bit too much. Too much air under these passes and causing problems for these Shropshire receivers. But if you want an example of how to play DB and how to time your tackle, that was it right there. Joel Hughes back to receive the punt. Adam Naylor looking to kick away. Good protection, Naylor pins this one inside the 45 yard line. And the Mavericks will retake the field. Scrays looking to extend the lead in the back end of this second period here in the Division 2 fight. So about a 35-yard punt, but it's going to mean that East Kent have a pretty decent field position again. And at the moment, Shropshire really struggling with that run game up the middle between the tackles. You remember Benjamin Crabb, 25 yards out, scored the latest touchdown, but it's also been Terrell Bovell who's been having his way see if the shops here can tighten up inside the tackles. 2.54 left. Two Mavericks almost took each other out there, the man in motion running into his halfback. Revolution, we're pleased that the Mavericks seem to be gifting them an extra defender on that play. They've brought on big number 75 for the Mavericks, Aidan Lowe, who makes the tackle on that one. Yeah, comes up though holding that right wrist, he does. And to the point where he's not even getting himself down in a three-point stance on second down. Craze, sprays to the air, goes up top again. Overthrows his intended receiver. Kai Osborne out there. The target. Santino Dummett. Tino, they call him. He was had good position on that. Did the defensive back for Shropshire. I feel like to do get these positions you know Shropshire needs some turnovers so if you're in a good position see if they can make some of these picks as these balls go up no huddle offense again end around looks like it's going to be snuffed out and it is Andy Bather one of the three Shropshire players there to make the tackle 
Good defensive back play. Cornerback comes up, turns that play back inside, does a nice job. Benny Debra with edge. Sorry, Carl. Benny Debra on the end around that time. Well so defended. That's, that's better from Shropshire on those three downs. You know, one incompletion, two runs up the middle, then they try to get to the edge as well. And they're going to force a punt with two minutes to go. I wish these people had stopped walking past us with food, Carl. What time is it now here? Ten past one. My belly's right rumbling. <laughs> Two minute warning then in this one. Shropshire going to get one more opportunity. Niall Stroud back to return alongside teammate George McPherson. Can Shropshire do something with two minutes to go? They had that kick return back for a touchdown. Let's see whether they can do something on the punt return. They've got two receivers back. Two first real amateur. Sorry, Mr. Maskell. First real amateur episode there. Coming out of the what, two minutes. Talking about chips in the two minute warning. Well, <laughs> coming out of the two minute warning and a substitution error from the Mavericks, which has forced them to burn the timeout. It happens, I know. But don't just knock your Happens head out me like that. So here we go then. Fourth down. Fourth and five from midfield. Come through to block the what kick and punt. absolute brilliant punt and it's going to take us oh, whip amazing. and roll out of bounds at the five yard line. <laughs> and as a result, John Ellender gets his driver out and practices his swing. Beautifully done by Ellender there. Can't do it any better than that. That was gorgeous. And there's me talking about whether Shropshire can do something with two minutes to go. Ellender just shuts the door on that possibility. They've now got to just line up on their four yard line with a swarming defense that likes to send the blitz and big hits going in in the backfield. They've now got to do damage, damage limitation and get to the half without a further score for East Kent. I know this is a stretch call, but punt Ellender is putting himself in a conversation for MVP. Not only is he the punter, but he had that interception not so long ago as well. Long way to go, 1 minute 54 remaining, first half. Check, Wait, check. drops back to pass. Oh, and that one floats towards Adam Naylor. It falls at his feet. Well, at least they've come out with intent of Shropshire. They didn't just run the ball and get to the half. They want to put the ball in the air. But these balls from Wake, just not as accurate as what they were in the first half. And some of them are lofted up, some of them are coming out too short. Just not got his eye in. Yeah, he looked good early on, now he seems to have lost a little bit of zip that he needs to put on there. Second and ten. Drop back once again, flags galore into the hands of Phillips, but that one's blown dead. Chances are this is going to be against the offence again. Full start. Referee Maskell will give us the official call. Possibly saying now that the defender drew the offence into the false start. So let's have a listen to referee Maskell. Full start. Offence. Right guard, right tackle. Half distance enforcement to the goal line. Still second down. So, yeah. No mitigating circumstances. It was a false start. And Revolution, second and ten, backed up on their own two-yard line. There's half distance to the goal on that penalty. Wake again, stands in his end zone, gets the ball out. And Naylor is the intended target once again. And that could have gone back for six, Carl. I heard you groan because you know how close that was. Jacob Henderson nearly had it. There he is. And he knows it. A little shake of the head could have had six for himself 143 remaining and all the time these passes fall incomplete the clock stops and gives the Mavericks a little bit of extra time if the revolution can't convert here not only that they're going to be punting from their own end zone if they're not careful third and 12 wake again pumps runs down and that ball again he had a man wide open in the middle 
he had Lewis Whitchurch who was in acres of space and he just short armed that one once again. Yeah, Wake had a good good Q1, but it's really not been on the on the money with these passes for Shropshire. Could have had something going, as you say. Lewis Whitchurch, who he combined with earlier in Q1 for those sorts of receptions, but it's just his arms letting him down in this Q2. Whether he's taken a hit or something, you never know. But just not on target. Fourth and 12 then. Naylor punting from the back of his own end zone. He's going to have to watch his feet on that dead ball line. And he's dropped the football in the end zone. And he's in trouble. That's going to be a safety for the Mavericks. Disaster for the Revolution. Not only will they concede that two points there, but they're going to be kicking the ball back to the Mavericks for them to have one last opportunity in this first half to extend the lead. John Ellender and that punt and that disastrous series from Shropshire. Here's the replay. It was Ellender's punt put him in bad position. Naylor with a rare mistake. And it was uh, the linebacker number 55. It was 35. It was that man again, Carl. It was Theo. With the safety. Still a minute and a half left for the Mavericks as well, Carl. The Shropshire defence have got to step up big now. Theon Coleman, coach called him out in the pre-game interview and he's every bit as good as advertised. So Naylor having given up the safety, he's now got a kick back to the Mavericks from his own 20. And remember it's a punt isn't it rather than a kickoff, it's out of his hands so some people prefer that and that's sky, it's a beautiful spiralling punt. Fielded at the 25. Out to the 40, makes the one-man miss, he's at midfield, to the 40. And dragged down inside the 40. Flag. Benny Deborah with the return, but yeah, flag on the play as well. Came in really late after the play, so... Maybe on the tackle, or maybe... Well, let's wait and see from referee Masco. It could be unsportsmanlike against Deborah for celebration, maybe. Could be a face mask, it's down where the tackle is. It looks like it's going to be a blindside block, maybe called. We'll have a listen. Pressing foul, blindside block, number six in the return team, 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. So, indeed, blindside block is the call. Joel Pearson, our rules analyst, wired straight into the referees, bringing us that information direct to you so a good return becomes a slightly less effective one but still just outside their own 40 yard line with a minute and change remaining Scray's going to the air oh and that <laughs> you got a bit of a mismatch there on the coverage number 91 for the revolution Ali Dummett was trying to cover a halfback and uh, kind of just assaulted him yeah, you can't get running back out of the backfield matched up on a, on a linebacker and obviously that's the sort of matchup that you want if you're a QB. QB sees it, no flag though, no. so it was clean. Dummett lined up on Benny Deborah, 1-10 remaining. But what this is telling you, Carl, isn't it, is that the Mavericks aren't... aren't um, Wanting to sit on this lead, they're wanting to add if they can while they've got this momentum. Scrays again, play action. And this time he's drilled into the turf. Number 99, Sam Roach Hodgkiss with the sack. He's had a couple of good plays, this Sam. Needed that. Just want to get out of this half without giving up anything else. Here's a replay. 99 will come from the bottom of his screen beats his man straight in on the quarterback and he's also getting his shoulder into the belly to try and knock that ball loose loss of seven third and 15 coming up under a minute remaining Shropshire you feel could really do with a turnover ball handed off for safety and there's a hole again great blocking 
And that's going to be short of a first down. So the Rev will get the ball back. Got a lot of depth at running back of these East Kent Mavericks. That's Andrew Johnson. They've got Terrell Beauville. They've got the touchdown scorer, Benjamin Crabb. Now they're bringing in Andrew Johnson as well. But it will bring up fourth down. We'll bring you some replays of uh, the scoring so far in this one. In a minute, as we come to the end of this half map. What an exciting half of football that's been. Shropshire 7, East Kent 23. But in the first quarter, it was a real stalemate. You can see the crowd there. We're up there at the back. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. <laughs> and there's East Kent with a really spectacular performance in Q2 particularly as we run you through some of these highlights from here at the Coventry Butts Arena. Well, it all started out with that coin toss, didn't it? And Shropshire deferring. And that seemed to pay dividends for them as they opened the scoring with Aitchison off the right side, barreling his way in for the opening score of the afternoon. And you kind of thought, well, yeah, and things are going Shropshire's up, way. Matt, on that pass interference, it was, wasn't it? It which was. It was a sort of dubious, dubious call, I thought. But anyway, the revs get in. And this was Beauville, who's been spectacular running in and bulldozing right there over the defensive back trucks his way into the end zone 25 yard running madden-esque dominant truck stick activated and that was 7-7 at the end of the quarter and then this juggling catch by barber streets great concentration and then the momentum just shifted its way to the men in gray call for a 14-7 lead extra point good again this was benjamin crab untouched into the end zone rips one right up the middle and it didn't matter who they brought in that east kent mavericks line was really dominant in that q2 and then from there remember the weapon who is ben ellender on the punt put the revolution under pressure and this happened naylor drops the ball in the back of the end zone and i think it was theone number 35 there with the tackle that takes him down the for the safety. Been spectacular. 23 7 is the half time score here. We're going to go and take a breather and we're going to hand you down to the studio with James and Tash. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. I think you deserve a breather after that first half because it was pretty intense that action. But let's talk a general overview of it, Tash. It perhaps wasn't as fruitful for Shropshire that first half as it was for East Kent Mavericks. Yeah, I think at times, especially for Shropshire, like it was a bit spiky. And if you think about how they started, they really pushed into the game, obviously getting the first score, really like pushing that momentum forward. But as you got past the first half of the first quarter, they started to drop off. You could see that they just didn't have as much depth as what East Kent had. East Kent woke up, I think. Um, they definitely were sleeping during that first drive, um, and the scores just kept coming, unfortunately. Um, especially some standout players. We were talking about number one from East Kent, um, number 81 there on, on, on the last play, and, and just really having the ability to go okay you've scored on us but now we're going to score on you and we're really going to score on you and I think East Kent actually needed Shropshire to score against them first to really actually kick them into the, into the place they needed to go. I was about to say I mean that, that score from Shropshire to start the game off it was a fantastic touchdown I mean brilliant teamwork we highlighted from the get-go there right at the beginning maybe just the first 10 minutes of that first quarter Shropshire Revolution seemed to be just on a different level everyone was doing their jobs everyone knew exactly what was asked of them from their coaches from their coordinators and they went out there and they executed it perfectly, didn't they? Yeah, I think that was one of our key discussions that, that we were talking about when we saw Shropshire um, in the first quarter. It was everybody knew exactly what they needed to do on every single play. They were so disciplined. They constantly, I mean, some of the blocks the wide receivers were putting in, they knew what they needed to do to push the team forward. Um, it was something that I, I mentioned about last night's under-19 GB game, um, where unfortunately there were certain times where receivers were missing blocks that were really crucial to enable the play to be able to get to that next level to that next step and the biggest thing I think for Shropshire was all of their players were doing that and all of their players kept doing that up until tiredness kicked in the moment that tiredness kicked and we started to see 
the QB's throw is going a little bit loopy. We started seeing not as many people running, not as many people catching onto those blocks. And there was that discipline that was then just lacking by the team, unfortunately, which then meant that, yes, we saw East Kent with some of, especially the run plays, making some of those blocks and making sure the blocks were on point to create the gap so the running back could just speed through. But that was, I think, the biggest issue for Shropshire is they then couldn't, they couldn't get that momentum back at all and they just kept getting scored and then that safety at the end unfortunately that is not how you want to end the first half on especially a mistake it's not how any team would want their final to go this weekend here in Brit Bowl weekend up in Coventry now we've spoken a lot about Shropshire Revolution let's turn our attention to East Kent because they've had a blinder of the first half of American football it's been fantastic to watch it although Simon was up here speaking to myself and he said oh no we're a team we're a team of, uh, of amazing people there's no individuals there's no I in team we're, we're an amazing in group but actually the individuals out there are the ones that are really putting their hands up and they're the ones winning this game we've already mentioned number one mentioned number 81 I think the quarterback is putting in an amazing game as well what's it looking like from your perspective Tash? From my perspective I actually remember saying to you I think part way through I was like oh actually I think Shropshire have this because East Kent they're doing things but they're not necessarily don't say that right in front of football <laughs> because they'll think that you've jinxed it Tash no, just, just throwing out a little warning for you now well, I, said, I, was like, I don't actually think they're doing anything special and then suddenly the game completely changed and as you say it was those individual players we were talking about specifically number one and just we, we were talking about that in the warm-up and I, I mentioned that um, East Kent actually looked like the more well-drilled team in, in the warm-ups and you could see them going through and everybody understanding what they needed to do in the warm-ups but then they came out in the first few drives and just didn't it didn't seem special and it didn't seem exciting and then suddenly yeah we saw that link up between the quarterback and number one and uh, I don't know what happened but they were just a spark ignited they have got a very good relationship I think number one is definitely one to keep your eyes on there uh, going into the second half sorry everyone um, because he, he went limping off we thought oh no is that the end of his Brit Bowl weekend but he came straight back on one drive later and suddenly put in an amazing effort to get the touchdown so again this team just keeps surprising us in a way wouldn't you say yeah I think as well when you look at the um, uh, the the touchdown where it was fumbling around and like I, I was thinking oh that's going to be a dead player next thing you know I'm seeing the arms going up and I'm thinking oh wow okay yeah you guys have players that want to make plays and that are pushing themselves to make plays and I think that is the difference at the moment is you have players for East Kent that still have the energy that still have the drive that still have the want and are willing to actually put themselves on the line to make the plays that are needed and we saw that when they they absolutely they they jumped on the opportunity when they saw when they saw that ball hit the ground and they saw that fumble they jumped on that because they were like this is an opportunity to even though it's only two points we're taking those two points we're getting a safety done now I'm going to turn this broadcast uh, very much into what the Shropshire team talk is right now you can't control the past but we can look into the future and we can take a hold of that so we should take a look into the future now as well what do Shropshire need to do going into this second half they're going to start on their offense they're going to start with ball in hand that's going to be crucial isn't it to, to regain some momentum in the second half yeah massively I think this is the reason why if you win the toss you always go for receiving at the start of the second half so that you can set the tone and you can set the pace for what the second half is going to look like on in an offensive perspective you want to be able to drive forward and obviously Shropshire did have a disallowed return touchdown which would have been incredible god knows what 70 yards down the pitch whatever it would have been so if they can come out and do that play again but make the correct blocks and not get flagged that would just lift that momentum up but following that they basically need to continue to keep their heads and keep their discipline if they don't do that they will allow East Kent to continuously keep pushing them down and keep scoring on them and that isn't what they need right now I think they've also got to remember haven't they the the key to their successful running game yes their number 27 is phenomenal with ball in hand but get those blocks back in like they were at the beginning of the match all of a sudden the yards will just start to tick over on the scoreboard won't they yeah definitely and it is it's all about those blocks that tiredness that they had towards the end of the, the first half will luckily have been they'll have they'll have topped up the batteries basically they'll have got to the point where hopefully they'll have eaten maybe some pineapple oranges whatever they need sweets probably to get themselves back and get that fizz in them to to hopefully have the energy to make the blocks make sure that they're on it with their plays and make sure that they have the energy to last out until the end of the game well let's hope they've taken your advice and packed half a suitcase of coffee and red bull <laughs> as well to give them the yes. energy for the second half but now east kent mavericks What's the 
I guess, what's the difficulty going into the second half for them? Because the, the last thing they want to do is take their foot off the gas, even just a little bit, and invite Shropshire back in too much to take out too much of their lead. And the next thing you know, we really do have quite the battle on our hands, but it will be Shropshire with all the momentum. I think if they start slow, like what they did at the start of the match, that will be the problem. Because if Shropshire, once again, get a score yes obviously they've come out and they are there it's now 7 23 i want to say the score is um and when you actually then look at the situation of them getting scored on and then coming back and scoring loads of touchdowns if east kent come out slow they are basically opening the door to shropshire to rack up the points and basically get back into the game they don't want to do that and when you see you've got two current gb coaches on both sidelines pretty much battling it out for the title they're both wanting to come away winners and be the gb coach at next camp going hello oh, it's bragging I rights isn't it oh, there's a 100%. lot of bragging rights up at stake not just for the players but for the coaches themselves as well i think that's going to be really interesting come the end of the game so with that in mind with what both these teams need to do What's your prediction? Give me that crystal ball that you've obviously got hidden somewhere and tell me who's going to win this. As much as I love Shropshire and have a lot of ties with Shropshire, um, East Kent are going to take it, in all honesty. I think they, they have momentum. It is theirs to lose right now. The only way I think they're going to lose this is they will really have to mess up. I mean, I think automatically then I have to go for the underdog because I can't be the same as you. It's like when you go out for food at restaurants, you can't order the same thing as the person you're with. So I'm actually going to go and back Shropshire. Look, everyone loves an underdog story. But I think, to be fair, there's now no expectations on Shropshire going into the second half. They can go back to their basic game plan, back to their basics from the earlier on in the season, from when they were playing you know, their ordinary fixture games. It wasn't post-season, there was no pressure. And now there's no pressure again because there's no expectation going into the second half of you've got to maintain a lead or, you know, it's a really close game. We've got to keep going as hard and as, much, as aggressive as we can. They can just suddenly go back to what they know is their way of playing. And if anything, I see that as a massive benefit. I don't know about you, but... I'll be honest, I love an underdog. If anybody's seen these streams previously for Brit Bowl, like, everyone will know I love an underdog. However, last year, especially with the National Premier Final, I got it massively wrong. I was pushing, saying Warriors are going to take this and Titans just blew everybody out of the water. So I am now going with my gut and I'm going with, with who, unfortunately, I wish I wasn't going for because my friends on the sideline will be basically cursing me right now, saying, <laughs> Tash, why aren't you backing us? And I do back them, but right now, East Kent just have momentum and they, they, they have the players to, Well that makes make me happen. upset because we're right by the Shropshire team so all of a sudden I feel like part of this group of players. So let's talk about something a little bit happier uh, rather than the result or what you think your crystal ball result is going to be Let, Look out into this crowd here, the fact that we've got people here who've come all the way up to Coventry from Kent to watch this fixture, to show their support the fact that we've got lots of just American football fans here today with us, this Division 2 final is here at Brit Bowl for the first time in its history as well, just how amazing is this whole weekend and this spectacle of today? Yeah, seeing the crowd get bigger and bigger as the day goes on is just so incredible. And I think, as you say, first time we've seen Div 2, but the first time as well we've seen women's on a Brit Bowl, uh, at a Brit Bowl finals. Which is coming up straight after this game. So don't go anywhere. Don't suddenly fly to America to watch some American <laughs> football. You can stay here. You can stay with the YouTube stream. But... Yeah, this crowd are just incredible, aren't they? Yeah, and I think that having a crowd that is growing and getting bigger, and you see how big this stadium is and how many seats there are, I can see it getting pretty full by the end of the day and it's already very loud as you say people have traveled up from kent to be here so the fact that we're seeing so many people traveling up being here for the day is just incredible because people are traveling for hours to get here meaning they're probably leaving at like five six o'clock in the morning just to be here for a brit bowl final which is amazing. I mean, so amazing, amazing, amazing. Great excitement. Great to see the amount of people here that are down with us as well. Let's let's talk what finally for one more time. This second half that's about to come up. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be bodies on the line from a Shropshire perspective. But it's also going to be some of the best football that we will have seen from a Division Two final in a long time, simply because of the stage that's been set now. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think that. Um, if, like, I, like what we've been saying, with East Kent, they will continuously keep putting their, obviously everyone's going to put their best players in, but I can see just that number, the number one being their like go-to player. But also, I, I feel like that this next half as well, we're going to see some real big defensive plays from them. Yes, we have seen some so far, obviously, talk about the, the mistake at the end, etc. But um, I, I just feel like that their defence are going to want to pretty much put up what 
what their offense are doing now and i think that it, i think that both teams are going to want to match each other because i think that as you say it's bragging rights for the coaches about winning it's bragging rights for teams about winning but i think it's also like some inter like inter team bragging rights as well if your offense puts up loads of points and your defense do but your defense do something incredible that could win the game but in that sense, it's great to see the encouragement from both benches. You know, the fact that as soon as, you know, the other, the other side of their team are on the pitch, they're following them, they're cheering for them, they're making the noise. And it's great to see the families that are here yes. as well. We've got one little kid who's here with the Shropshire Revolution, the nominated water boy. He's their loudest fan. He's the best person in this arena, I feel. And I think he's been a crowd favourite so far too. Massively. And I think that um, we were just talking about community and especially like in Britball. Like Britball is such a community as much as we, talk about obviously the competitive side and the competing and the com competitive nature of what Brit Ball is turning into actually what both of the teams have done today is um they're both wearing pink to to raise awareness for for breast cancer due to one of the players playing uh, one of their family members and so that support right there is just showing that even if you're competing against somebody how how you can be there for each other and how you can still support the other team and what somebody else might be going through which I think is just such a lovely touch from both teams to come together and decide to do that. It's beautiful and I mean make sure you do keep an eye out for the top of the helmets that do obviously have the pink ribbons on them. Some players have got pink socks, I can see some pink cleats as well and I've never been part of this family but you can tell me first hand experience wise and the fact that pretty much everyone here has welcomed you. Come and say hello, I did obviously send the build off <laughs> British American football royalty here everybody uh, joining us this weekend but there really is that sense of family, sense of togetherness, sense of community. Is that going to be particularly important for Shropshire? The fact that they are slightly down, the underdogs now in this second half. Everyone that's here, they're going to be relying on super heavily. Everyone that's come to support them, that's just behind their bench, they're going to be really leaning on in this second half. Yeah, definitely. I think that win or lose today with Shropshire, they're just after speaking to their their head coach John Angel um, just before just before the game, um, he just highlighted it was really great to be here and just having the support and having people come down and support them. Um, I think that looking at as you say community and coming together, win or lose, both teams at the end will be coming together they will they will be supporting each other and it, it's similar to what you see at for example like a world cup or um for, for, for football for soccer for for rugby where you see at the end of a match people picking each other up to be like don't worry like keep your head well, up well this more than anything is a huge celebration of the achievement of everyone's season and i think especially from a Shropshire perspective we spoke about it in the build-up to come back from a relegation from division one losing a lot of players players going overseas as well i think east kent will be here as well to congratulate them at the end of the match yeah massively and i think that this is the great thing about div one and div two with div one and div two both of the teams have already been promoted so and at the end of the day your goal is to get promoted to the next level that is your goal anything extra than that is just basically the icing the icing on top of the cake pretty much and i think that when we look at um at both of these teams if they if they win it and if they come away with a trophy incredible but if not they've still got that promotion so they still have a win from the season so they can still be proud of themselves and what they have achieved and what they have done whereas for like with the premiership like title tomorrow that accumulation yes you will have won your division but there's no promotion so that is but that would the be like telling the all. pros that just because you've won your division that means it's an amazing season but actually they yeah. want that ultimate prize at the oh, end. they want the big one it's like the super bowl you can be the the nfc west the nfc east the whatever like champion you can win your division you could then go and win the afc or the nfc and come away with that trophy but unless but, you win that lombardi trophy I was about to say if you don't come away with a super bowl win your season has been for nothing, basically. Like, you can come away with wearing your T-shirt that says, I am a champion, but you are not the champion. And that is exactly what the Premiership final is like tomorrow. Whereas these guys can still come away going, we are the champions still. Yes, we are not the overall Div 2 champions, but we have got our promotion. We know that we are in the mix right now in Div 1 next season. Great. Well, the players are now pretty much ready to get going for the second half. So quick final words from you, Tash. One thing you want to see different from our sides but we'll start we'll start on this side first with Shropshire what's one thing you want to see different I want to see them sustain what they can come out and start with throughout the match I want to see the stamina and I want to see them being able to continuously keep making the blocks keep the pace up keep running hard keep going strong I want to see that being a continuous thing rather than something they're able to do at the start and not not moving forward. And 
finally East Kent Mavericks? I think they just need to keep what keep doing what they're doing, but I do want to see more big plays on I do want to see more big plays on defense. Like they've had they've had a couple of near picks. I want to see I, I want to see the picks happen. So stamina from Shropshire, more big plays on defense from East Kent. Well, who knows what we're going to see in this second half of action, but what I can say to you is that we are seconds away from finding out what the result of this game is going to be. So without further ado, we should be heading straight up to our commentary team, Mark and Carl. Well, I'm not sure that Mark's here, but I'm here still, Cole. Where is Mark? I prefer him. I, I prefer him as well, if I'm completely honest with you. I, I was about to say, great job, James and Tash, but I'm going to rescind that now after getting my name wrong. But anyway, there we go. Bob and Felicity, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> we are ready to go. Great half-time analysis from the guys down in the studio, and we are underway, and you feel that that deferred decision by the Revolution in the first half has got to pay dividends now, and there's a break on straight from the off. The Mavericks chose to go with the switch and fair play, Simon Farrenden chose to keep the ball and managed to get a good gain on that opening kick return. And Cole, story of that first half very much has been the momentum dominated by the Mavericks. Yeah, especially in Q2. Q1, you felt like the uh, Shropshire Revolution came out, were doing the right things and running the ball and you know, they were getting some some uh, completions as well. Alex Wake had his eye in and has played well in that Q1 with Aitchinson's one-yard touchdown. But that just didn't continue. And Wake's really struggled in Q2. It's one of those quarterbacks, I think, that when he's got his eye in and he feels confident, plays really well. But when he doesn't, it falls apart a little bit. And that's what happened in Q2. And East Kent Mavericks, they really got stuff going, didn't they? They absolutely did. Injury on the opening kick return there to one of the Mavericks. But uh, what you can't say for Wake is that he's not had time to throw. He's had acres of time. That offensive line have done a really good job protecting him. And he's, he's just missed on target. So hopefully he's had some spinach at half time, got some strength back in that arm, and we'll see a, an increased and improved performance from him. Yeah, the defensive line for the East Kent Mavericks you know, really came to life in Q2 as well. Theon Coleman, who got the opening sack against Alex Wake, he was causing all sorts of devastation and chaos in the backfield. And he was the one that nailed Naylor for the safety. Punter having to punt from his own end zone. And Theon Coleman was right there to drag him down after Naylor made the mistake. Mishandled the football in the back of the end zone and got punished for it. Lucky it wasn't a touchdown, really. A bit of a delay while an East Kent Mavericks player is now back on his feet, which is good to see. And speaking of punters as well, punters are people too, and Ellender for the Mavericks has had an outstanding first half. Yeah, Ellender's, that kick was one of the best kicks I've ever seen in a Brit Bowl weekend. That was absolutely stunning. 60-yard boot down to the three-yard line and trickles out of bounds, and that's really what caused that safety. And shows you what a weapon a punter can be if you find a good one there. Rare as hen's teeth, Matt, but when you do get a good one, they can really cause a lot of damage. Here we go. First and ten then. Revolution on their own 42. Phillips in motion. Back to pass is Wake. Oh, in and out of the hands. He had Phillips again running down the seam on a post. But he's just overcooked it once again, Carl. It was actually a better pass uh, from Wake. It uh, had less air underneath it, and that was close to being a reception. Just uh, just needed to be a tad more accurate with the football. Unlucky not to complete that one. Again, though, Ellinger was back there ball hawking from his safety position. Promising signs from the Revolution. No aggressive on first down. Second down, back to the ground. Aitchison, still on his feet. And the pile gets pushed just about to midfield. Better running from Aitchison that time. They need a bit of fire in the bellies to Shropshire. They deferred in that first half. They wanted the ball at the beginning of the second. And if they can make this drive count, then they will be right back into this game. Right close to East Kent Mavericks territory now after that good kick return. Third and three. The Revolution will not want to go three and out on this opening possession of the second half. 
Aitchison looking for a gap up the middle and he's stonewalled and he's not going to have enough for a first down but it is in the area where the coaches may elect to go for it this stage Cole yeah well they picked up a couple they're not going to give him a great spot where his knee went down so it's going to be a long two now they did fake punt it in the first half and they also tried to catch East Kent Mavericks offside with the hard count they're going to line it up and we'll see now whether they're going to blink or whether they're just trying to catch him off with the hard count again once bitten twice shy you would have thought from the Mavericks they held last time looks like we're going to, they are trying this hard count and there's the flag and I think that may well be for delay of game good discipline once again by the men in grey yeah Mavericks tried that twice now Shropshire at the end of the day it's a bit like the boy who cried wolf isn't it you know you, you've got to actually go for it to to create that tension in a defense so they will jump if they don't think you're going to go for it they'll just stay still Naylor on to punt then three and out on the first possession of the second half for the revolution that's a good punt itself inside the 15 in fact it's going to be marked exactly at the 15 and I suppose the only thing that the revolution might think is well first half the Mavericks went three and out on their first possession so maybe this second half is going to go the way for us that they went for the Mavericks in the first but oh, and a good saying those sort of things well, these Kent Mavericks have already proved how dangerous they are on offense you can see what they were trying to do trying to get the ball to um, their receiver early Lewis Whitchurch and if they'd have completed that it would have been a very different story that series but there were some better signs from Aitchinson in terms of the running first down then Scrays hands off plenty of room to the right hand side of the line that's going to be a first down Mavericks Andrew Johnson again on the carry, just showing that depth they have with running back. They've gone back to that original formation that they had in the first quarter, which is a back to either side. Gives you options to run left or right. Play action underneath. Nice take. And that's going to be close to another first down, directly in line with our commentary position. And I think they are going to move the chains once again. Because on the back end, there is a revolution player rolling in pain right near the 45 Matthew Barber Street into the game early in Q3 to move the chains so a couple of Barber Streets there then on the sideline for the Mavericks Matthew Barber Street receiver Robin Barber Street as well we've called Robin's name a couple of times he of the juggling touchdown catch fame earlier in the second quarter I wonder when they look at the stats just as Barber Street 200 receptions 3,000 yards they don't realize it's two people first down Scrays again run to the left patient and then lowers the boom Brought down by Gareth, sorry, Tino Dummett. Getting those stars for this East Kent Mavericks offence back into this game early in Q3, moving the ball around, making sure all of their top players get to handle the ball early in Q3. Just feel like Shropshire need a turnover. Second and four. Another first down. Three first downs on this drive already. Doesn't matter whether they give it to Johnson or one of those other running backs, those offensive linemen doing a really good job up front. Shropshire just don't have an answer for it at the moment. East Kent imposing their will and then looking to try and make the defensive line jump. Scrays goes up top. Two men out there, but it's beyond both of them. 
Matthew Barber Street, the intended receiver that time. Good coverage by the DB. Shropshire want to watch that run up the middle on this down. Bringing in another defensive lineman. Ryan Robinson comes in to shore up the middle of that defensive line. Two running backs this time for Scrace. Three receivers, two to his left and one on the near side to the right. Sends one man in motion, could be a screen coming, but no, handoff to the right. A real patient run again. And as you mentioned already, Johnson or Bovell, both equally effective. Throw it on first down, run it on second down. Give yourself a manageable third down, third and one. This is good design for the East Kent Mavericks to keep their foot on the gas. Sprays drops back, looks left, comes back to his right, hits Barber Street. And Barber Street picks up another first down. You feel like the play calling and the execution is really on point from this East Mavericks team. And if they do manage to hit the 30 point mark on this drive, that will really knock the wind out of the sails of the Revolution, Carl, in this one. From the defensive coordinator, if they get another 10 yards, I'm calling a timeout, getting my defence together. Scraves has a man, he's beyond him, it's Barber Street! And it's touchdown, Mavericks! Too late for the Shropshire defence. No flag for taunting, he's waving at the defensive back. Would have thought there'd be a flag, but what do I know? We were saying at halftime about the standard of football in Division 2, Carl, on show here today is really, really impressive. And I think that drive just encapsulates what we've been talking about. Yeah, quality from East Kent. They're doing everything well on offence now. Quarterback Edward Scrace really playing well, moving the ball around, getting it to his best players, and whether they run or pass, they're finding success. Kick is up. And the magic 30-point mark has been reached by the East Kent Mavericks. So, at least the Barber Street household is going to be happy tonight. Touchdown in the first half for Robin. And then Matthew delivers at the beginning of this second half as well. Here's the replay. Just well beaten his man. Makes a nice over-the-shoulder catch. And he's waving at the camera, isn't he? That's why they didn't call the flag. He's saying, hi, Mum. <laughs> We're going to have a good dinner tonight. The whole family. As we await the kickoff, then. Ten minutes left, then in Q3. Ellinder. Oh, and the ball falls off the tee before Ellinder gets a chance to strike it. Even that ball is now thinking. I'm not sure I want you keep kicking me. <laughs> so we reset. Now can Shropshire do something on the kick return? They've already had one called back. And ran it all the way to the end zone and it was called back on a hold. There we go, Ellender puts the ball into the end zone. It's going to be brought out. Here's that fake again, it's a slow fake and the ball's on the floor! Oh. Absolute disaster! Miscommunication, both returners thought the other one had it. And the Mavericks are in business again, Cole. Uh, to me, to you, to me, to you. Just can't do anything right, drops here at the moment. Another injury to an East Camp Mavericks player. I think he just collided with his own player as they both tried to dive in to pick up that football. 
And the switch, as I was saying in the first half, that switch can be really effective, but it can also cause problems for a kick return team. You know, you've got to run, you're not running north and south, you're running east to west, and if you don't get the communication bang on, then that sort of thing can happen. This could be a long 25 minutes of football now for the Revolution. You'll notice from the scoreboard it is 29-7, the extra point was missed wide by the kicker, so... 29-7, you think the way that the Mavericks have started this second half, you'd think that lead may well be extended in the next few minutes. Two scores on the ground now, two passes for touchdowns from Scrace. It's a long way back from here. It is, and they're trying to make something happen on that kick return. You can understand what, what they're trying to do there, Shropshire. You know, they did they did take one back close. But it got, you know, it went all the way to the end zone, but did get called back on that holding penalty. Now the East Kent player is on his feet. Yeah, doesn't look overly comfortable though, Carl. I think it's Nico Di Pasquale. Here's the replay. You see now they sort of delay the switch and then there's some confusion about who's going to take it. And neither of them oh. know oh, who's going to yeah. get it. Phillips and there is Di Pasquale coming in. Oh, it's difficult to see how the injury happened. East Kent with the ball and moving. Wildcats this time. Runs over the defender, close to the end zone. No signal yet. Just short. Just short. But it is Danny Carroll, I believe, number six. Or was it? May have been Matthew Barber Street. Couldn't pick out if it's five or six, but the same formation they're going to go for again. I think it is Barber Street. Barber Street tunnels his way up the middle. Still again. Signal now, touchdown Mavericks. Barber Street, Matthew this time with back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. First with a 30-yard touchdown pass. And he takes it in from two yards out to extend the East Kent Mavericks lead. And uh, things going from bad to worse for Shropshire. Gareth Phillips down for a moment, but back on his feet for Shropshire, which is good to see. Well, the majority of this crowd in the stand here is a Mavericks crowd. Cowboy hats all over the place. And they will continue to make noise as we drift towards the fourth quarter. Snap is down, kick is up. And this time again, no good, wide to the left. So Hughes, who was so good in the first half. Here's this. the replay in that Wildcat. You can see this was the initial run to set up the touchdown. Barber Street barreling his way using that toughness. Looked like it was going to be a good form tackle, but he wouldn't be denied. And here's the run in. This time he goes over the left-hand side. Gets that big offensive line push. Just does enough to get the ball over. Matthew Barber Street showing what he can do. It's not just his brother that can score. It's him as well. And those two between them now, three touchdowns. So Farrington and Dummett back to return again. You hope they've had a conversation since their last outing. Well... I wouldn't bother with the switch anymore. Just run it back, chaps. Ellen Dirt for the Mavericks once again. Drives the ball. And it's going to go in and through the end zone. And Farrington and Dummett go, yeah, it's probably best if neither of us touch it, to be honest. Let's take it from the 20. Enjoying watching Ellenden kick as well as his defensive back plate. Nine minutes left. An interesting call. We're at the stage where 
if there's one more Mavericks touchdown, we go to a running clock. Now, that'd be a shame to see in a final, wouldn't it? It really would. But these Mavericks are really geeing the crowd up on this sideline. Down from us, the Fubu Zaylers explode into life. There is Matthew Barber Street, number five, right in the screen. Enjoying himself today, enjoying the crowd. Number one and number five, the two Barber Street brothers stood side by side on the sideline. Let's see. There's a flag again. Ball in! Close to being intercepted. Looking for Ross McDonald, the receiver, but another flag. That's the second time Jacob Henderson's nearly had a pick. Number 58, the linebacker. Always in good position. He's in good position for that one as well, just couldn't hold on. Looks like an illegal motion penalty against Phillips. Mavericks looking like they're going to decline this one. We'll hear from referee Oli Maskell. No, in fact, they won't decline it. Why would they decline it? So it is a five yard penalty, Phillips again. Ollie Maskell leading his crew this afternoon of Henry Richardson, Kenny Glover, Jim Briggs, Amir Brooks, Ian Sneddon, Andrew Morell, and Dave Hewitt of Bafra. Run this time to the left, and Aitchison has some daylight. The good blocking in front of him, and he gets all the way out past the 30. Great blocking from Alex Park, the offensive lineman, the pulling guard, trucked a couple of. East Kent Maverick players, one of them still down. Hopefully get a look at a replay on that. Just obviously mentioned the officiating crew this afternoon and uh, really interesting if you weren't with us last night for the Great Britain France under 19 game, we had a first from the officiating crew referee Jessica Ringelstein of Germany, the first woman to be a referee at an IFAF men's game. And she led her crew of three Officials from Great Britain and three officials from France and did a fantastic job, Cole. She did. Didn't put a foot wrong. So, first down then, Wake out to the flats looking for Phillips. Beautiful grab by Phillips, but he's snagged before he can even get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Jacob Henderson again, he's always there or thereabouts, round the ball. That's what you need from your middle linebackers, your inside linebackers, you always want them roaming sideline to sideline and Henderson's been in good positions to make a pick and that time he's right there to drag Phillips down for a loss of half a yard. Final mention about the officials, we've got Jim Briggs out there today and Jim Briggs responsible for pretty much writing the rule book for UK football, so great to see that calibre of officials, a pump and then the sack and Wake goes down under heavy pressure and this is getting ugly Carl. As far as the revolution are concerned, at least. Yeah, pumps once, wants to go over the top, but Jack Sullivan dragged him down. Here's the replay. Number 90 coming in, there's the pump, and bang. Jack Sullivan with the big sack takes weight down on second down, making it increasingly difficult for Shropshire to put anything together. Third and long then, 17 yards needed for Wake in the offence. And the Mavericks crowd gets loud again, going to the air. Floated in and it's... Oh, what a snag! And Phillips still on his feet, out to midfield. On his feet at the 40, the 30, the 20 and dragged down finally at the 17-yard line. What an incredible catch by Phillips. That was amazing. That is a highlight for Brit Bowl for the ages. Mark Phillips with it, not just a spectacular catch, but the run after catch as well. And that's what Shropshire needed, some individual brilliance from their very best offensive player. Here's the replay. Just watch these pictures. Alex Waite with a bit more time. This time he can get the ball out to Phillips. Look at this, one-handed catch. Pulls it in, beats a tackle, tiptoes down the sideline, turns on the burners, beats his man. Great play. Wake on first down, play action, swings it out, and now the Revolution have something going to the big tight end. And Thomas Holloway picks up five yards. 
And the Revolution have a little bit of something to work with now. Phillips jogging himself off. Remy Kabash. Sorry, not Remy Kabash. The reception is made by Thomas Holloway. Second and four. Run this time to the left, nice and patient. Chase Griffith looking to try and see if his lineman could open something for him. And they managed to, and it looks like he's got enough for the first down there. It'll be first in goal, Revolution. Seven yards from pay dirt for Wake and the offense. Back to pass, he's come. And there was an edge rusher there, completely uncovered again. Another blown assignment, which meant Wake had to force that one out before he was ready. He did have a man out there, but that one falls incomplete. Pressure causes problems. And then the five-yard line, East Kent are going to send it again and keep sending it to throw Wake off balance. So taking the time in the huddle, making sure they've got the right call in there, everyone's on the same page. Chase Griffith in the backfield. Maverick players trying to get this crowd into it again. Shropshire, what a timeout. So the Shropshire OC, who's also the head coach, calls the timeout. Five minutes 42 in this third period left, so still plenty of time, Cole. It's a, obviously a big deficit, but if they score here, you never know. Shropshire seem to play on momentum a lot, don't they? It's, you know, when Wake's hot, he's really hot. When he's bad, he's really bad. So he got hot with that catch to Mark Phillips and Mark Phillips injecting some confidence into the team. Yeah, that big pour of Phillips. He stuck it out there and then, like you say, the run after the catch was impressive. Second and goal from the seven. Big noise again from the Maverick faithful. Chase Griffith stonewalled at the line of scrimmage. What a hit. Adam Ridgewell slamming into the runner. I always think you've got to be a brave man to wear zero on your shirt, but he's just backed it up there as Ridgewell. Zero yards gained. Third and goal now, no question this is four down territory for the Revolution. 35-7 behind. They'd like to at least pick up three or four more yards here. No Mavericks defending more than four yards away from the line of scrimmage and that's going to make the task all the more difficult. Big number 52, Alex Park. Went early that time. And the East Kent Mavericks are applauding their fans. Well, it's disappointing because they got... Sorry for speaking over the ref. They got uh, that zero yard gain and then five yards loss. Still third down though. Now, where's Mark Phillips? There he is, he's coming out to the top of the screen. He's going to be in the slot position on the right-hand side of Wake. They've got Henderson on him. They're He's looking, looking for Phillips. Way. He's got, got Phillips for the touchdown. Great call, Carl. He's the danger man we knew. And it's a great route to the corner. And a nice pass over the shoulder where nobody could catch it but Phillips. 
And that has been Phillips' touchdown drive right from the off. And that's the way to use Mark Phillips. They've got him matched up on Jacob Henderson, who's a really good linebacker, but you're not going to cover Mark Phillips one-on-one. -on -one. Very few linebackers in the country that could match up one-on-one -on, -one on Mark Phillips. Great play call from Shropshire to get a score back. And the kick is up and good. And the Revolution double their score. Still a big deficit and the defence really need a three and out at the very least. Still in the third quarter though, Cole. This one just got a little bit more exciting. Here's the replay on the touchdown. You can see Mark Phillips just breaking out his right hand side. Henderson was beat off the line. Just quick feet. And Mark Phillips with the big reception to set them up inside the 10. Deserved touchdown for the Revolution. Still four minutes 30 left in the third. So in football terms, still 19 minutes and 19 and a half minutes to go. We've already had 49 points, goal. We knew these teams could score. They're not letting us down. Go for the onside little squib kick, and that's fielded, and that's fielded by a running back, and that running back is going to make three men miss. He dances to the 20, to the 10, daylight in front, one man to beat, trucks him at the five, and he's brought down inside the two-yard line. Andrew Johnson, who's caused such damage on the ground, continues to cause damage on special teams. Well, they've got the hands team lined up there, and you know Andrew Johnson's been causing all sorts of problems in the running back. That's exactly the wrong man you want to kick it to. Hell of a return. Still hungry for more. These East Kent Mavericks. And just as Shropshire shooting themselves in the foot a bit, Matt, with that one. Just as Shropshire would have felt they've got a lifeline back into the game, they now find themselves having to defend just two yards of field. Here's the replay. You can see it straight to Johnson. And then great footwork cutting to his left hand side as we get back to live. And that live action is a handoff up the middle for the next touchdown of the afternoon which goes the way of Kent takes them over the 40 point mark here's a replay this is the squid kick again that sets up the touchdown here's Johnson's return makes his way to his left hand side and Manages to get an angle where he looks like he's going to outrun everybody. Down to the three. And then here's the replay of the touchdown. Oh, this is the extra point. We'll bring you the touchdown in a second. So East Kent take the score 42 to 14. And here's the replay on the touchdown. They give it to Johnson again. And he finishes off what he started with a three yard ball rush into the end zone. Extra point is good. 42-14. Three minutes left in the third. And just as soon as Shropshire felt they'd had a little bit of life, the Mavericks crushed that belief. Well, we've definitely been entertained this afternoon in this Division 2 final. Remember, stay with us, because at 5 o'clock this afternoon, it's the turn of the women. London Warriors against the Birmingham Lions in the National Women's Football League Championship as this one sails through the back of the end zone once again. Any way back for the Revolution now, Cole? Give the ball to Mark Phillips. That's a start. That is a start, absolutely. 
No, I mean, you've got to get... East Kent are doing so many things right now. You know, their special teams is so good. They are punting so well. Their defensive line is causing problems in the backfield. Their offensive line is moving the Shropshire team. You know, if you look at it as a coach, you just say, well, where's the kink in the armour? And it's really hard to find. This Mavericks team, well drilled, solid, lots of bodies, good depth, deserving winners of this game so far. Revolution come out then facing a the four touchdown deficit at the moment. Still in the third quarter. Wake, and that's a fumbled snap, and it's lucky to be recovered. That's going to work very well for the Revolution. As Chris Treacy manages to snaffle the ball, which goes awry. And the coaches are going, yeah, that's just how we drew it up for a nine yard game. Chris Treacy thinking fast. Had to on that. like 52 for Shropshire is the man down that's a shame it's Alex Park because Alex has had a really good game he's been one of the linemen I've been impressed with the Shropshire revolution he's uh, made some great blocks out there on the edge from his tackle position medics are going to go to him six touchdowns for the Mavericks so far Carl this afternoon yeah, you said they put up some points during the season as well, but they've really showcased what they're capable of today. They'll need that when they move into Division One. But these this uh, East Kent Mavericks team, they're certainly ready to move into that next division and move up into that Div One. It'll be exciting to see what they can do in that division. Yeah, while well, we've got this injury break, let's have a quick recap of the Mavericks season. They started back in April and they beat the uh, East Kent Sabres 18-15 then took on the Ipswich Cardinals and won that one 38-0. Nil-nil, Mavericks and Gladiators, that one didn't go ahead and then they came and took on part the Sussex Thunder 28-14. 56-3, they then demolished the East Essex Sabres. Ipswich were next on the agenda 27 10 the Mavericks ran out winners in that one Sussex again second time round 24 6 only beat the Colchester Gladiators by 7 to 0 and then in the playoffs we mentioned about them taking out the Hereford Stampede 43 to 3 and the Somerset Wyverns by 30 to 7 only one time all season did they score less than 10 points which is a very very impressive Resume. Alex Park, the Shropshire Revolution lineman, gets helped off the field. Seems like a, a sort of ankle injury. So they will swap in. A new offensive tackle, and Shropshire will go back to work. Second and short. Second and short indeed. Ball. And then the delayed handoff, which doesn't go anywhere. Brings up third down. Yeah, just some confusion in the backfield there from Treacy and Wake. Didn't know whether it was going to be a pitch or I think Wake. Treacy thought it was a pitch. Wake thought it was a handoff. Kind of, kind of counterplay. In the end, it goes for a loss of four. Third and five then for Wake. High snap again. He manages to snag it. And that's picked, and that's going to be pick six time. And that will end up now turning to a running clock. As another score for the Mavericks. Adds the further nail into the Revolution coffin. Well, they've been threatening that the whole game. There are a number of times they've been close to timing it. And you can't, as a receiver, wait for the football to come to you like that. Nicholas Mayer with the pick six. You have to go get the ball if you're that Maverick, if you're that Revolution receiver. And Mayer just uh, steps in front of the defensive, uh, the uh, receiver, and takes it all the way to the house. And if this PAT is good, we will go to a running clock because of the point differential. Kick is up. 
And it's off the upright, so we are one point away from a running clock. <laughs> Is good for the game. You don't want to see a running clock in a final. The third PAT missed by Hughes in this second half. Here's the interception call. Look at that, it just steps right in front of him. The receiver's down on one knee, just waiting for the ball to come to him. And you just can't play like that. You have to go get it, especially against a team like East Kent, who take every opportunity they can to put more points on the board, they're still hungry. You know the Mavericks are sniffing that 50 burger now, Carl. Still the whole of the fourth quarter to go. Sniffing that 50 burger like you're sniffing those chips. I will be when this game's done. Ellender takes his place on the field, having found the tee. Ball sails through the back of the end zone once again. And it's got to be hard now for the revolution. Got to be hard now for the revolution to bring themselves back on the field, particularly knowing they've got a another full quarter to go, Carl. This is when your coaches say to you, one play at a time. Forget about the score, just execute the next few seconds. What you can't do is, you, you know, when you're down by this many points, you just got to ignore the score to some extent, not put yourself under that pressure. You just go back to what works for you. Try and execute well, try and limit the mistakes. Got to remember a lot of these touchdowns problems have been caused by Shropshire errors. And there's another Shropshire error right there. Revolution having to take a timeout because they didn't have enough linemen on the field. Sometimes you just keep beating yourself. 2-12 left in the game. Sorry, in the third. Shropshire, I think, probably wish it was 2-12 left in the game. Tell you what we'll do this weekend, Carl. We'll give an award to the crowd of the weekend as well. And I tell you what, it's going to take some beating with this East Kent crowd. Wait in the middle, and that's picked again. And bad to worse this time. It's Jordan Simonet who looks to find the end zone, and he gets snagged down inside the 20. And Simonet back-to-back interceptions for Wake. This is what I was saying, you know, the Mavericks are playing fantastic at the moment and the Revolutions are also just handing them easy opportunities. And I know you've got to try and come back in it and you can't blame Alex Wake for trying it and he's got nothing to lose. But these East Kent Mavericks, they're all over it at the moment. Everything's going their way. What a contrast to the first half though, Carl. Well, the first quarter, rather, the first half ended 23-7 in favour of the Mavericks. First down, it's Johnson again. In fact, it's not Johnson, it's number 33. And number 33, who is Omid Tamiz, finds his way onto the score sheet. Touchdown, Mavericks. This is a day they won't forget. These Kent Mavericks, everyone getting in on the action. Another running back comes in, only Tammy's. You know, East Kent have picked up a lot of players from all over the region, all over the Kent region, lots of Exiles players. You know, it came down to East Kent Mavericks, didn't want to necessarily play in that Premiership division, so they came down to play in Div 2 and showed their quality. And they've been players as well, you know, they had the heart of the team there as well and then they're attracting players from all over the region. So, it'll be interesting to see who they retain moving up into that Div 1. 
but they're certainly putting on a show for us today as another injured player goes down to Shropshire. That's the fifth touchdown of the third quarter for the East Kent Mavericks. And that is now a 50 burger and we will have a running clock for the remainder of the game. Quite a statement from the guys in grey. And it looked like an evenly matched game in that Q1 and early Q2, didn't it? It really did, it really did. But yes, they've asserted their dominance. Worthy winners, as Tash said, the only consolation for the revolution. Both these teams will be promoted to Division 1 next year. But it's always nice to finish a season with a little bit of silverware as well. There'll be a bitter taste in the mouth of the revolution at the end of this one. As the revolution player, Steve Dusconi born makes his way off the field after receiving treatment. Good to see him jogging away there. Here's the replay on the touchdown. Well, this is the pick that sets up the touchdown, first of all. Jordan Simonet. Again, Wake lofting one up, and Simonet right there to take advantage and hungry for the end zone. Doesn't quite get there. Chase Griffiths doing the defensive duties. And here's the touchdown. Fumbled snap, but everything's going East Kent Mavericks' way. And it was Omid Tamaz, the running back number 33. Good shirt number, that one. <laughs> Goes in for the touchdown. <laughs> You're right, Roger Craig used to wear that. I was thinking of someone closer to home. <laughs> I used to wear 82. Yeah, we don't talk about it. No, no one well, they didn't last yeah. very long. Extra point is up and good, which gives us 55-14 in favour of the East Kent Mavericks. Still in the third quarter. Wow. They have put on a show, and they've done it across all their units, you know, defence, special teams and offence. They've been solid everywhere with we these Mavericks. We need to be thinking about MVPs in this game, Carl, and because the Mavericks have spread this ball out so much, it's going to be quite a tough call. Both ba Barber Street... I know you nearly got me saying Baker Street then. Both Barber Street boys found the way I'd to the end I'd give it to, to Barber Street's mum. <laughs> <laughs> who's made the biggest difference on the field. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss Barber Street, if that is indeed your name, congratulations. You go for that switch, which was disastrous before, but this one has proved a bit more effective. As Matthew Barber's, and sorry, no, this uh, Tino Dummett makes his way over the 40 to about the 44 yard line, but look, Carl, there's laundry on the floor. But returning to the MVP conversation, assuming the fact that we can't award it to Barber Street. Mom, Mama Barber Street. Mama Barber Street. Then we're looking at Beauville scored the first one. Oh, I'm talking all the way over Maskell again, apologies, sir. Yeah, Beauville went into the end zone to begin with. Ben Crabb scored one. Matthew Barber Street has scored twice. Robin Barber Street scored once. Mayers had a pick six. Omid Tamiz has got into the end zone. Pick the bones out of that lot. Yeah, and you can't take away the good performance, you know, for that offense to run. Edwards Grace has to play, and make sure it runs as smoothly as it does. Two he's had a good game. Two touchdown passes for Grace, no interceptions. He's led very well. It's going to be a very difficult one. You then look, think about Theon Coleman on defense as well. Down goes Wake again. Yeah. Fumbled snap again. Mistakes and errors from Shropshire. Even the referees are fumbling now, Col. But yeah, like I say, we've mentioned Theon Coleman on defence has been a beast as well. Let's, we've not even spoken about the punter. Elander, yeah, interception. Good... Accurate and deadly with the punt, led to the safety. <sighs> Maybe we'll just give it to the whole team. Well, it would defeat the whole purpose of the award, man. How do you pick, pick one player from a team of so many performances? That seems unfair to me as well. well. We spoke to the head coach before the game, Simon Mackerel. He said, you know, you're going to see a whole team performance. 
was also the end of the quarter, so the quarter will be extended for one on So, yeah, the end of a dismal quarter. Gets extended for one on time down. <laughs> for one on time down. Yes, Ross, you're grateful for that. Because of the illegal motion call. And Wake ended up at the bottom of the pile. And first and ten. Wake going upstairs. A battle there, and that's going to be caught, and it's simultaneous possession where the flag comes down there. Offensive pass interference, defensive pass interference. You make the call, Carl. That's 50-50 all the way, that ball. Both players played that well. And if two players do catch the ball, possession will always go to the offence. Here's a replay. Wake just trying to make something happen, even backed up in the way that he is. He sees the one-on-one -on -one match. He's got a tall receiver, but actually the DB's quite tall as well. I think that may go against the offence, number 11, yeah, and an extended I think you arm. Might be right, Jack Colchester. Offence, number 11, half distance in fourth from the previous spot, we the first down. And Nothing going down, right. They just can't catch a break, and there'll be another untimed down at the end of this Q3. Can't end the quarter on a penalty. Torture for the revolution. They now find themselves on their own three-yard line with a distinct possibility of another safety. Chase Griffith takes the ball up the middle. And he's stacked up. And a maul ensues. And maybe that will be the end of period number three. I don't see any flags on the field. And that is the quarter. A five touchdown quarter for the East Kent Mavericks that has pretty much sealed this Division Two title. And now they'll just be thinking, oh, how many points can we total? Yeah, yeah, Matthew Barber Street with a 30-yard touchdown pass then. Matthew Barber Street again with a two-yard run. Then you have Andrew Johnson. He returns the kick and then takes it in for six. And then a pick six from Nick Mayer. And then another pick from Jordan Simerset. And then another touchdown from the Mavericks, only to Maz. Five touchdowns for East Kent. And let's not forget Mark Phillips' touchdown as well that actually took place in that Q3, which was absolutely spectacular to set up that touchdown. But other than Mark Phillips and that drive, it's been a dismal Q3 for Shropshire. If my notes are correct, we've had seven different touchdown scores. Sure. Offense, defense, that's phenomenal. Yeah, and it just shows the depth and strength of this team, these Kent Mavericks. Talk about sharing the wealth. Let us know what you think, hashtag BritBowl2023. Maybe. We're or sure. all BritBowl35. <laughs> Now we have seen some messages coming in from you. Yeah, it'd be good to know, let us know where you're watching from, who you're supporting as this Brit Bowl 35 weekend continues. First of four games on the Saturday and the Sunday. We obviously had the Great Britain under 19s against France last night. Unfortunately for Coach Rowe and the British under 19s, they fell 21 7 to the French and fall out of Group B and into Group C for their next encounters in the European Championships. Wake in his own end zone. Looking for Chase Griffiths, who can't pull that one in. Well, you know you're going to get hit because you know these East Kent Mavericks bring the boom. And always, if you're running back, and you're down by so many points and you've got a chance to make a reception. You're just in the back of the mind. You're hearing those footsteps coming. Now at this stage right now on third and 15, Wake is just trying to give some breathing space to Adam Naylor to punt, because he don't want to be giving the Mavericks a short field again. Wake out into the flats. McPherson makes the catch. He's only going to get back to the original line of scrimmage, and on comes Naylor in the punt team. Daniel Wheel coming in to uh, punish that reception, minimal pickup.
Benny Deborah looked to be going back to join his kick returner. Now just kind of loitered at the 40-yard line, just off camera. And the Mavs faithful still bringing the heat in the crowd. They've been a factor as well this afternoon, I think, Col. They have. They've been rabid fans with those Vuvu Zaylas. They've got dressed up, made a lot of noise, and they've also celebrated a lot with their team, East Kent Mavericks. Although they're the away team, they have the home stand right behind them. Naylor Fields, Naylor Fields, a low snap, manages to get a kick away and it's going to take a Shropshire bounce inside Mavs territory. It's still rolling inside the 35-yard line, comes to rest at the 33. A great punt, 70-yard punt there from Naylor. Health and safety have just arrived in the comms booth. Apparently, we are transgressing with uh, some restrictions. Fun police have arrived. My first warning. Yeah, fun police have arrived, Carl, in the shape of Joe Walker. First down, Mavericks. Five yard pickup on first down, straight up the middle for Johnson. Great punt from Naylor, but that's been the highlight for a while for Shropshire. And when when a punt is a highlight, you know things are bad. East Kent now keep the ball on the ground. Johnson again. He bounces to the outside, crosses midfield, and there's another flag. I think this one may be going against number 90 of the Revolution. You wouldn't have seen it. Connor Luscott in the backfield. With a little bit of afters once the play had developed. Although actually looking at it, the uh, Mavericks are marching backwards, so yeah, it may well be called against I them. wonder whether that was a helmet-to-helmet -helmet called on a running back. I don't know, but... Um, oh, they're saying it's a hold on a slot receiver. Let's have a look. Johnson's already had a touchdown today, but he wants more. Great stiff arm there. There's the hold. You can see it right there on number seven. So good call from the referees. Is there um, is there any etiquette now in a final con as far as East Kent are concerned? 55-14 up in terms of running the score up? Or? Well, I think you, you continue, you know, you'd expect them maybe to get some backup players in there and get them some experience in this sort of environment in front of a big crowd like this. You don't know whether you're going to be back, you know, when you're going to be back. So it's nice to get those backups in. But we're still very early in Q4. Running clock, though. True. And the etiquette, yeah, I mean, you, you should, different teams have different etiquettes. I mean, there's in terms of a gentleman's agreement that you don't run up the score. Over against the defence. Personal foul, striking. Defence, number 19, the penalty is declined. Personal foul, face mask, on defence. That run, the penalty is enforced, 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic, first down. So, I thought it was a hold. Yeah, in discipline, I did call that Connor Luscott for the personal foul after the play had gone. It looked to be a bit of a unnecessary hit by Luscott. Well, we saw the hold on camera as well. But I guess those two personal foul penalties take precedent. But yeah, you, you can't imagine going back to the etiquette side of things, Carl. You can't imagine East Kent going deep. Can you? Well, I can imagine it. I Through the air? All sorts of things. We'll have to see. I mean, the old gentleman's rule, you're not running out the score. That's gone a long time ago. Johnson on the carry again. Blockers out in front size down by Tino Dummett from his cornerback position. Pick up a four on first down. 
often I think when you see scores when it's high, it's because you're bringing in backup players that then want their opportunity to score. You know, they've been sat on the sideline for a while. They do have a new quarterback in now. And they do have a new quarterback in, I believe, if I'm reading that, is that 23, Carl? I think it's number 23. No, it's not 23. It'll be 22, yeah, Nicola Zappa. Nicola Zappa. So Scraze's work is done for the afternoon, and a, and a very, very impressive afternoon's work it was as well, orchestrating the offence. Two touchdown passes, no picks. Scraze, you can see, just on the sideline down in front of us. Number 17. 11 minutes, 12 remaining in the fourth quarter, remember? Coming up at five o'clock, we have the women's final between the Birmingham Lions and the London Warriors. Loads of head-to-heads there with players who play together with the British Lions. Group promises to be very entertaining Saturday night viewing. Still with 11 minutes and change to go in this one. Zuppa then drops back to pass, has to roll out to his right and tucks the ball. Slides out of bound. Loses two or three yards on that one. Third and ten. Third and 11 then, Johnson with the carry, flag comes out late. Another Shropshire player on the ground at the moment, just getting uh, him some attention. We know that uh, Shropshire will move up into probably the NFC 1 South. Some face mask penalty again, Carl. Sorry to interrupt about the, the division alignments next year. Yeah, just looking at you know who, who these teams will have to face. Both of these teams, again, uh, have already been promoted. This game is for you know the championship Div, Div 1, but it uh, doesn't impact their promotion opportunities. We know that Shropshire will probably move up into NFC 1 South. So they'll be facing the likes of the Nottingham Caesars, Chester Romans, Sheffield Giants, Birmingham Bulls and the North Hanks Knights. Yeah, Nottingham and Chester were the, the, the uh, teams to beat in that conference, but Sheffield came on strong late, didn't they? They really did. And they're a premiership outfit from not long before. So it'll be a tough division to move into. But if, I mean, this is assuming there'll be no kind of shake-up of the divisions. Lewis Bailey there, making his way back to the Shropshire sideline. And probably the East Kent Mavericks going to get promotion into the SFC 1 Central replacing the Essex Spartans so they'll be taking on the likes of the Norwich Devils who came close to being here themselves just got beaten by Hertfordshire as we get in back to the plane we saw that in the first half Johnson running into the man in motion and it happens in the second half again but he does manage to pick up three yards after colliding with another grey jersey second and eight now Mavericks just outside the red zone sorry just inside the red zone 17 yard line no huddle offense again low snaps up a back to pass oh flings that ball over and it's into the hands of his receiver receiver is Teddy Bessick tight end Yeah, we think they're the division to go into, Carl, but like you say, there may well be some uh, 
Some shake-up, funky realignments, as Buffer sometimes do. But nevertheless, the one thing that we do know is that they'll both be Division One teams. And will continue to develop. I feel like East Kent will do well in Div yeah. One. Yeah, definitely. Ross I think size. Shropshire may struggle a bit in the, the division they go if they do go into that south. Well, there's a, a play design that I've not seen before. Right, this is how we're going to draw it up. Centre, roll the ball to your quarterback. Quarterback, go down low and just let the running back pick it up off the floor. OK, coach, what are we going to get? We're going to get a five-yard pickup and a first down. Happy days. Write it in. Here's a replay if you want to draw that play up just as Matt said it. Five-yard pickup, East Kent just... The ball just bouncing their way every single time. All afternoon, yeah, all afternoon, you're right. Apart from that first three and out, and then the opening drive from the Revolution, it has been all East Kent, and like you say, the rub of the green, the bounce of the ball, whichever way you want to put it, has all belonged to the men from the south. First and goal then, from the seven. Johnson again, falls forward to the five. To be fair to East Kent, they're not really trying to rack up the score, are they? No, just not. keep doing their thing. A lot of the yardage on this drive has come through penalties as well, Carl. Personal foul penalties, holding face masks. So, yeah, you're right. Good experience, though, for Zuppa in here now. And Johnson as well. Here comes Deborah in motion. <laughs> that looked ugly from the start. <laughs> they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll be glad of the penalty. Saved them. From what might have been a fumble. Yeah, called against. Even the Clinton. whistles go East Kent Mavericks way, don't they? I mean, if that play had actually run, that would have been a clear fumble, but even the penalties that go against them, there is a silver lining. Clayton Bookman there on the call for the false start, but it could have been the whole of the offence, to be fair. Second and goal backed up to the 11 now. I am starving now, Cole. Need some sustenance as Deborah comes in motion again. Zuppa drops back to pass, floats it up, and it's looking for Kai Osborne in the corner of the end zone. The ball just sort of floats out there. Tino Dummett defends that well, in really good position. No one's quitting on this Shropshire defence. Still making them work for those yards. Zuppa comes to the sideline to chat with offensive coordinator Adam Lillis about the plan for third in goal. Two receivers to the right, one to the left for Zuppa this time. Johnson alongside him at the right. He's going to the air again, rolls to his right. Now tucks the ball, makes one man miss, and gets dragged out of bounds after a pickup of just one. Fourth and goal upcoming. Cranage makes a tackle by the sticks. Field goal unit coming on, Cole. Joel Hughes, seeing if we can get take this up to 58. Well, he's had plenty of practice on the extra point, so uh, he's only missed one of those so far. No, he's, he's five of eight on extra points, Cole. He's missed three. PATs so far. See if he can add three more to the score in the first. Oh, it's a little fake. And he's going to the near side and he makes the spin. And he spins again and he gets down to the six. Interesting play call, but kind of a nice play call as well because once again, like we've been talking about, doesn't add extra points to the score. But what it does do is put Shropshire in a very difficult situation on their own six yard line. Fake field goal then ending that drive, which was largely penalty driven by the Revolution. Six minutes on the clock and running. So we're into the dying embers of this Div 2 final. Uh, you get the feeling Shropshire have dropped their heads a little bit, both on defence and on offence. 
Looks like they're going to bring their backups in as well. Yeah, Dominic Sims. And another illegal substitution penalty, 12 men in the huddle. We'll be handing down to Tash and James in the sideline studio at the end of this one. Bring you all the reaction from the Div 2 champion East Kent Mavericks. See if they can get you some player interviews as well. As the ball is in the air out to the flats, McPherson makes the reception from Sims. A nice little one handed catch to the hip. Pulls that one in. Yeah. But no gain, no. actually loses yards. The ball's travelled about 15 yards through the air for a pickup of Neil Poit. You can feel the life has just been sucked out. Yeah, the life's been sucked out. Oh, I've interrupted Maskell twice there in 10 seconds. Apologies again. The life's been sucked out of the revolution, and to be fair to them, it was sucked out of them during that epic third quarter, the five touchdown third quarter. It was a barrage of points from East Kent on offense and on defense with a pick six as well. And uh, they didn't deliver the, you know, delivered that knockout blow as well. But there was no getting up off the canvas from that for Shropshire. An eight touchdown outing for the East Kent Mavericks. Second and eleven from the five. Then Simmons in the pistol. Stands and delivers, and reception made on the near sideline. Only three yards short of a first down. Reception made by Aidan Kelly. Is the replay on the Shropshire pass and catch. Nice stretch up. Oh, looks a little slow motion now from both teams, Carl, doesn't it? A little bit like Pro Bowl football now, the defenders kind of giving a little bit more respect rather than hitting hard, very soft coverage. Obviously that's because they may expect the revolution to go deep, but Simmons getting some game experience. Sorry, Simmons there at quarterback. Run up the middle on third down, it's going to be short of first down yardage. Can't take away from Shropshire Revolution season, you know, this outing. Q1, great quarter for them. Q's two, three and four, they're going to want to forget about, especially that Q3, which was just a barrage, but they've had a great season. And hats off to them, they had big wins against, you know, the crew railroaders and Lincolnshire Bombers, they shut them out. And they had to put up 56 points against the Lincolnshire Bombers during the season and 50 points against the Humber Warhawks. And then beaten 37-7 in the playoffs. So it's a season for them to be proud of, even if this game they've been outplayed by a very good East Kent Mavericks team. Naylor takes the snap, but whistle's blown as Deborah and Simonet are back deep to return. And Shropshire have done it with the core of their team. You know, Alex Waite's been a quarterback that's been around for a long time playing for Shropshire. Mark Phillips has been with Shropshire for a number of years as well. They tend to breed loyal players that stick around do Shropshire, and uh, it's still the core of that team that began it all those years ago. And finally, a flag goes the way of the revolution as 12 men on the defence or on the special teams return for the Mavs. Gifts the revolution with a first down. And that's picked again. 
So the icing on the cake for the Mavericks. Another touchdown, another pick six, and another different touchdown scorer again. Owen Hides this time, the linebacker for East Kent Mavericks, steps into the limelight towards the end of this one and puts up yet another score for the Mavericks. Here's the replay. Simmons dropping, comes over the centre of the field and that dropping linebacker just does a, a really excellent job does Owen Hyde of being in the right position at the right time. Pick six, another highlight for this East Kent Mavericks defence. Two pick sixes on the day. Oh, well, apologies, it wasn't a pick six. It mean, looks like no. the ball's out, Matt. I think you're right. Drops you have recovered. I think you're right. He must have gone out of bounds short. Well, still some drama left in this one. We'll adjust our notes there, Cole. It was an INT, but only down to the one and then fumble. And the Revs have the ball back. Two minute warning. So Owen Hyde was actually pushed out of bounds before he got into the end zone, so I do apologise. There was all those voo-voo-zailers going on. <laughs> I was thinking there's another touchdown. So Shropshire actually get the ball back on a... And they've only got 97 yards to go to score, Cop. <laughs> I mean... What a strange series of events. Shropshire would end up with the ball again. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Sims back in then, standing in his own end zone, and that's a false start on the near side by Shropshire's 88. 89, I think. Nice. There we go, Brendan Lightbound, guilty of the false start. Inside the two-minute warning now. We mentioned about an MVP call. We've learned who it's going to be and it's actually a very interesting call but also I think a very a very deserving call as well we'll leave that to you you can find out a little bit later on but so many players I think we've had seven different touchdown scorers we've had Scrace two touchdowns through the air no sacks he's been clean Sims back to pass in his end zone floats it out off the fingertips of James Rogers, the tight end. But I think you could probably work out, if your quarterback is pretty much untouched and he's thrown for two scores, if your running backs have had holes big enough to drive buses through, then you probably can begin to have an idea about where the offensive MVPs are going. And I hence the term MVPs. Second and 11. You haven't left a lot of guesswork there, Matt. No, sorry. Sims over the head of Lightbound. Third and 11 as the clock continues to run. As we see the crowning of the Div 2 champs as the Gatorade buckets. The end of the game. And with that, Division 2 belongs to the East Kent Mavericks. Here comes the bucket. Head coach Simon Mackerel tries to elude the advances of his players, but to no avail. Congratulations to the East Kent Mavericks. An authoritative win stamps their authority all over this division during the season. What looked to be a very, very competitive first quarter, as you said, Carl. They extended their lead to 23-7 to at half-time and then were rampant in the third quarter.
that's got to be one of the top scoring third quarters I've seen it seemed to go on and on and on for Shropshire just no let up the only light in that Q3 for them was Mark Phillips touchdown and spectacular catch but East Kent just racking up the points here's some of the highlights coming up for you second half highlights here Colt that opening this score of the second Street, half the 30 yard touchdown over the shoulder to him to open up that Q3 scoring and that's, this is where the disaster started wasn't it this was the real confusion in the Shropshire kick return where neither of them took the ball and uh, East Kent Mavericks quick to pounce on it set themselves up with a two yard run from Matthew Barber Street those Barber Street brothers having a great day that was the second touchdown for the East Kent Mavericks in that Q3 Matt yeah and then if you remember they went this was the spectacular catching of Mark Phillips into the end zone this was the only highlight really for the revolution a 10 yard touchdown catch and throw Mark Phillips so impressed by him today and then they went for that onside kick call that didn't work didn't it Johnson picks up the ball and does what he does down on the ground takes this all the way back down close inside the 20 and this this run here set himself up for a touchdown so on the very next couple of plays Mark Johnson took it in for a score here is that score barrels his way over from three yards out into the end zone more points for the East Kent Mavericks Johnson this time then the defense came to play Wake putting the ball up and Meyer picks the pocket of the receiver pick six time and the scoring wasn't done yet in the third quarter Omid Tamiz with a difficult snap to handle but the QB handles it ever so well Kras has done everything that's been asked of him today and Tamiz takes it in for yet another score and the celebrations just continued throughout that Q3 but those were the highlights from Q3 which really broke the back of Shropshire no way back from that and, uh, and there was no scoring in the fourth quarter Cole rather remarkably we did go to a running clock though because of that uh, large margin there was margin. no scoring so I decided to make one up on a pick six and never happened well done to these Kent Mavericks love deserved the, champions you love these scenes at the end as well there's, there's always so much respect it's, it's a game where you go out for 60 minutes knocking heads and then at the end the respect that all players and coaches and staff have and you see this rocks revolution they're applauding the fans and this fans have been a, a real factor as well in favour of the East Kent Mavericks call lots of Shropshire fans and even the East Kent Maverick fans standing up giving them a clap What's louder than a Vuvuzela, Matt? I mean, they, you know, East Kent bring the Vuvuzelas. What answers a Vuvuzela? Foghorn? <laughs> During the London Blitz had that air raid siren they would oh. bring down. I do remember that from last year, that air raid siren. I think, I don't know whether I prefer the Vuvuzelas. East Kent Mavericks fans really brought the noise today, created an amazing atmosphere. So game one done then of this four-game Brit Bowl weekend. Joe Walker down there as we see the D2 champions banner on the scoreboard confirming that it will be the men from Kent who take the spoils. And you think the right decision to have the Div 2 final here at the Brit Ball weekend, Matt? Yeah, absolutely so. The standard of play we've been witness to there, I think they are... I, I, we'll struggle to see a better standard, I think, all weekend. I agree. 
Uh, Joe Walker now takes over the duties on the mic. Joe Walker has been coordinating this weekend for Baffer. As Oli Maskell and his officiating crew come to collect their commemorative medals, umpire Henry Richardson, Kenny Glover, Jim Briggs, Amir Brooks, Ian Snedden, Andrew Morrell, and Dave Hewitt have done a sterling job this afternoon for this Div 2 final. East Kent Mavericks show their respect to Shropshire. And up come the Shropshire Revolution to collect their runners up medals. Remember, their first prize, their first objective was to gain promotion to Division One, and they've done that. So, as you mentioned earlier, Carl, they'll look back on this season with immense pride, achieved their objective, but just fallen short at the last hurdle. Yeah, they stayed with East Kent Maverick. It's good competitive Q1 and then Q2 Mavericks just pulled away and then Q3 Mavericks just hit gears four, five and six and accelerated away. But uh, Shropshire, they certainly have the makings. You know, they were in Div 1 for a number of years before they actually had that awful season last year. So it's good to have them back in Div 1. You know, they were perennial... Um, perennial rivals of the Nottingham Seas is obviously a team that we know really well and you know they've been around and in Div 1 for a long time so it was a blip in their history to drop down to Div 2 and they've they've sort of said to themselves right well Divs 1 is where we belong and uh, we want to get straight back up there and that's what they've done so congratulations to them on a really good season and we look forward to welcoming you back into Div 1 where you can compete with at that level which is where you belong and like you say though May well be a struggle because that Div One with the with the Caesars and the Chester Romans and the Sheffield Giants and yeah, Div One seems to have improved, yeah. especially in that central area of the country. You know, the Giants, very good team, coming down from Premiership and they're now in that Div One. Nottingham Caesars, obviously, you know, undefeated until they come up against the mighty Northumberland Vikings, who we will see tomorrow in the Div One final. But uh, so you're right, Shropshire will need to play and be at their best and maybe they need to do some recruiting to ensure that they've got the, the players to compete uh, to continue to be competitive in Div 1 and not just find themselves dropped down into Div 2 again but they know how to do it Alistair Jarvis and the coaches and others you know, they're in the Great Britain uh, set up as well so they're learning and growing all the time Simon Mackerel will be very proud for his East Kent Mavericks but so will John Angel on a good season congratulations to him <coughs> and congrats to the Shropshire Revolution and the Revolution show their appreciation of the crowd and the crowd reciprocate God, I just had a little bit of a, a spine tingle then it's just, it's just a brilliant place to be right now maybe I'm just a bit chilly <laughs> No, it is great, great atmosphere watching these teams. And it's a privilege to be able to do this coverage it really for is. my fourth year, your fifth year, Matt, so congrats. And, you know, it's always exciting, always fresh, and this has been a really good game. Well, I'm sure we will have our critics out there, Cole, but they must be doing something right to have been asked back for our fifth Brick Bowl weekend. But now it's all about the Division Two champions, the East Kent Mavericks led by the barreling Andrew Johnson. They collect their medals and take their place behind the champion's banner with the British American football flags proudly blowing in the Coventry breeze. And the Vuvuzelas are out in force once again. Congratulations to their coaching staff, led by Simon Mackerel, who we heard from at the beginning of the game. Adam Lillis is the OC, and what a great job he did. And Adam Lillis, obviously the Great Britain offensive coordinator as well. 
and uh, you saw why I mean putting up over 50 points against a good Shropshire defence I know there were one, one uh, defensive touchdown in there but uh, Adam Lillis did a fantastic job as did uh, DC John Ellinder Len Button, Danny Reynolds, Jamie Witcher, Graham Wig, Arwa Gador, and Luke Jones. Don't forget the water boy. Well, they, they mentioned about how important that young man was and what a fan he was and what a, an absolute talisman on the sideline. Was the... Uh, Waterboy, yeah. Luke Jones. Great scenes here, Carl, as the Mavericks get ready to receive the trophy. Joe Walker, who's done a fabulous job along with the, the Baffa crew this weekend. So I think Joe Walker now is going to announce the MVP. Or MVPs. <laughs> Can you give us any more clues, Matt? Oh no, here's the D2 trophy. <laughs> Captain John Ellinger and head coach Simon Mackerel. Hold it off the plate. East Kent Mavericks are Division 2 champions and well deserved. John Ellender, who's the kicker yep. and the punter yep. and the defensive back, yep. he's also the defensive coordinator. What a man of many talents. And he is now the D2 trophy lifter as the Mavericks are going to have a hoedown tonight, Cole. Where is Mama Barber Street? That's what I want to know. Where is she? There she is. There She's she on the is. Oh, is maybe it? that's it, not. That, that, no, maybe, maybe I, know, I, know, no, I don't think that was Mama. No, not the way she was greeted. I will announce it for you. The MVPs of this game were the East Kent Mavericks offensive line. Kept, kept the quarterback Scrays completely clean. Opened massive gashes in the defense of the Shropshire Revolution for the likes of Crab and Barber Street and Tamiz and Beauville to exploit and rack up those eight touchdowns that we saw. So congratulations to Charlie Bates, Matthew King, Jacob Mead, Dominic Nellums, Craig Dibble, Gregory Chapman, Ross Chapman, JD Booker, Jake Griffiths, Ashley Bolter, Clayton Buckman, Christopher Hurst. Michael Miranda and Adam Chapman. Congratulations to you, the offensive line. Uh, yeah, congratulations to all those guys. We can now hand down to the field where Tash has got a very special guest. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How did today's game go? When we look at, obviously, Shropshire getting the first score, um, what was the changing point, I guess, for the team to then continue and basically keep racking up points over and over again? Uh, I mean, for us, we've had a few games where we've gone behind this year already. For us, it, it's just digging deep and, you know, the coaches do a great job of speaking to the players and getting them back into the game. 
what would you say uh, were your standout players from today's game? Today's game, because obviously you did have a couple that made some big plays for you. Yes, it, oh, it, there's been too many for us to, to, to talk about. I mean, offensively, we've had pretty much all of our running backs had an outstanding game. Um, Ty Bevel and uh, Omid, who's one of our rookies, had a really good run at the end, got him onto the field. Um, Ed Screese has done some great jobs throwing the ball today. Um, we had an amazing catch from one of our twins, one of the Barber Street twins, defensively, across the ball. <laughs> and they're outstanding. <laughs> Lovely celebrations there. Now I've got to go dry off before the next game. Um, <laughs> but now looking forward to next season and obviously moving into Division 1, what are you now going to need to do as a team to get to that like next step in and look at that division? So for us, it's going back to the drawing board. So we'll have, you know, we'll give the guys a little bit of a break. Then we start again, breaking it down, see what we've got in. We install what we need to install for the defensively. And it's just, just, yeah, just rebuilding again. No, so congratulations. Go enjoy the celebrations and I'm sure that you'll probably have many more bottles of water thrown over you. So enjoy. Thank you. So um, we're about to announce the, uh, the the Division 2 Brit Bowl final MVP. I know all the guys are celebrating right now, but that was an East Kent Mavericks win over the Shropshire Revolution. Um, we're going to see if we can get the MVP over here so we can see if, see if we can see if we can find find the MVP. And and try and get try and get an interview with them. But as we said, East Kent Mavericks win. They are so ready. <laughs> you're just you're just so ready. Obviously, you lifted the trophy for the team. Yeah, How does yeah. it feel to be the overall Division Two Great World Champions? It's, it's pretty mad to be honest. Uh, I played for this team for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Coach got you back there. I have to remember not to use any bad language. My sister's watching. Uh, <laughs> You know, so uh, yeah, I mean, we, I played for the team for a long time, played in the Premiership uh, sort of 11, 10 years ago. The club's been through such a hard time in terms of uh, like funding and people coming in and out. And there's a couple of guys, there's a couple, there's a guy that can't be here today, Mark Reed. He's at home, it's his daughter, I think it's his daughter's 18th today, so he can't be here. You know, without the likes of him and the coaches and the guys here, like there wouldn't be a club. And uh, for me, like this club means so much to me. I know it sounds ridiculous. Like we've just won this trophy and people are like, uh, you know, Division Two and stuff. But this club's going in the right way, you know, and it's just so proud to be part of it. Um, like these guys are all my friends. Like my, my best man at my wedding come from this team and my ushers and stuff like that. You know, it's just such a good thing for like uh, the, the game and the community. Like so many guys, I played, like I said, 11 years. I over like 300 people and made so many friends. So like anyone that wants to come and play, like come and play and get involved. Honestly, like it's the best thing I've ever done. What are you looking forward to the most about being in Division One next season? Uh, yeah, getting back to the last time we was in Division One, we uh, we didn't we didn't really put our best foot forward to be honest with you. So we're going to go back and uh, sort of make some new memories and uh, put some things right because last time we didn't we didn't put our best foot forward last time. So we love it. Well, go and enjoy the celebrations with the rest of the team and yeah, have a great evening. So. That is it from myself. Head over to social media and you can see all of the interviews there. Now I'm going to hand back over to James, who's in the studio. Well, we have our first champions of Brit Bowl 2023. East Kent Mavericks are your Division Two champions. But the American football action doesn't stop there this weekend at Butts Park Arena here in Coventry. Coming up in just a couple of hours time, a 4.30 start on that coverage, London Warriors against Birmingham Lions in the Women's Premiership Final. I for one can't wait and I can't wait for you to join us there as well. But for now, it's goodbye from Coventry and we'll see you soon. Four months, nine days, and but a few hours ago, the sea.
Yeah, if I were not upon the screen, something else I'd 